There we go. Now we're going live. Here we go. Two minutes early as per usual, but it's okay. We're, we're early. We're never on time. We're always early. This is the way it has to be. This is two o'clock, give or take. It is Sunday, and welcome to the Sunday service. We're back on again this week. It is good to have you here. The notification has just gone off in my pocket to say that I'm definitely live, which is a good thing, thankfully, because <laughs> if I wasn't live, I'd be talking to myself. Always nice to have everybody here, as per usual. Please click the like button on the way in and share the live, if you wouldn't mind as well, out on your social media. I'm sure out there on social media somewhere, people will really want to be attached to uh, the Sunday service. We can all have a chat here. There is some um, serious people who are coming along today as well. Of course, the industry talk is on again, which is, uh, we're talking about bits and pieces that are happening across the, the motor industry, as per usual, particularly pertaining to Ireland. Some stuff that I've noticed over the last few days, which have been really, really exciting, but also, in a, in its own little way, kind of a threat to where the industry is actually going. Not my party industry, the journalism side of it, but rather the sales side of it. So if you're in sales, or car sales, or any that sort of stuff at the moment, I have news for you, and it's coming along in the next little while, that there's a lot of new entrants to it. Uh, good to have everybody along. I see there's a good few people in the chat already. Uh, please click the like button and share it on. Thank you. I'd love to have the place polluted with people. It would be really nice <laughs> to have a few thousand here today. would be good. I know the rugby's on again today, so we'll be watching that out of one corner of my eye. I don't even know what time it's on it. We're playing France, I think. Um, but the weather is dreadful, isn't it? Even the weather out there. Bloody hell, lads. What's going on? Like, weather is just weathering and it's rough. Uh, a lot of the questions that came up earlier on today are now disappeared for some strange reason. I don't know why to do. Just lads asking questions there since 11 o'clock this morning, saying that they're after buying uh, Captain Trooper Bollock's hoodies and all sorts of stuff. New line of hoodies and things are on the way out with a new logo coming as well. You'd see it on my Twitter at the moment. A new logo with the BF thing in it, designed by two lovely guys in Nace. And uh, uh, it's also on the new podcast, which if you haven't seen the new podcast or heard the new podcast, you should go over and have a look. Just episode one is out at the moment. Just a standard little chat thing to where we're talking to Max Hart, who's a 19 year old race driver based here in Ireland, but is possible for BTCC fame in the very near future. And he came on uh, the podcast as the first one. Uh, Paddy McGrath has been on. John Whelan has been on. Leon Nolte's coming on to us. Uh, there's a few there's loads of names coming on to it as well so over the next few weeks there'll be an hourly podcast going out every Friday for you just for the crack like for something to do Colin Whelan's in the chat just donated there by Super Chat Super Chat is really good thank you very much oh we're doing well now there's a lot of people coming into the house thank you very much for 115 people in the house at the moment which is nice it's nice that's a tight number we can manage that number it's okay we're here I'm going to make my chat with a little bit bigger that's a little bit small at the moment uh, but yes, it's been a weird week, isn't it? It's been another strange week with not enough uh, information coming from the government about what we're actually doing, whether we're going to open our businesses or close our businesses next month. Who knows? Who knows? And we're now on St. Valentine's Day, which of course is a made-up day. It's called Hallmark Day as well, but we don't really celebrate it here in the house. We do nice dinners and things, but that's, that's as far as it goes. We don't buy cards or flowers or any of that sort of stuff. We don't do any of that because that's it's just a rip-off at the moment and we just... We're very anti rip off in this house, I have to say. I have an understanding wife who's happy with that. Uh, like Patrick Walsh there says he got a, his missus got him a capture stupid ball, his hoodie for Patrick for her uh, Valentine's Day. Very good idea, really good idea. Uh, that's nice. That's from Kerry, uh, from uh, Giddy Goat Clothing down in Kerry, which are a really good little bunch of people, and they're sending us his capture stupid ball once. There will be new hoodies coming very soon new merch and hoodies and things all made here in Ireland all designed here in Ireland all delivered here in Ireland it's the whole plan of what I'm trying to do at the moment um, how you, uh, after what upcoming models are you driving that's as good as um, it could be anything <laughs> the way lockdown is going at the moment it looks like I'm going to be driving a few Mazdas over the next while I currently have a Skoda Octavia it might be the first Skoda Octavia I don't really like it's not terrible the suspension's very odd in that car it's very odd I can't quite work out what is going on it's an MHEV one which is the mild hybrid version for the life of me I can't see exactly what the mild hybrid bit is doing in the car it seems to run the engine all the time there is no kind of cut off other than when you're going downhill which it was always able to do. If you remember the four-cylinder engine that uh, Audi brought out, was able to shut down two cylinders and even shut off the engine completely going on hill, and that had no battery in it. This one has a 50 kilogram battery somewhere under the back seats, and I cannot figure out what the hell it's doing in there. So it doesn't, it, it's gone up in price, and it, I can't find a reason why you would buy it over a full electric or a proper hybrid if you want to go that direction, or a proper PHEV. And I just dropped back a BMW 5 
520D, uh, sorry, 520E, and it was absolutely supercar. Two litre petrol, uh, full PHEV version of it. And that kind of PHEV one is going to continue, I think. I think that's what's going to happen over the next while. You'll see a lot more of them coming out. Um, I don't think there's any good reason why they want to keep doing other than there are people who like the idea of driving a PHEV over anything else. I did get a new fitness watch. If anyone's actually wanted to just see a pair on screen every second, I bought a Garmin... Um, a Garmin uh, Fenix watch. Finally bought a Fenix watch. I was going to buy an Apple watch, but I really couldn't live with all the notifications. <laughs> I just couldn't. <laughs> if I got any more notifications of the day, particularly on my wrist, I would have I would have burned the watch after half a week. Just fired over a wall or something. Panda Bait says, how about a bit of sun peeking out in Cork? You're lucky. There's nothing here. It's just wind and rain at the moment. Hopefully it will spread it out later on. Uh, Mock has stood out in his green colour. White colour choice so poor across many car brands. New Tucson only available in flat red. Yeah, I know. And... The problem, I think, a lot of that is because people don't stray very far from black, white, uh, silver, you know, that, that kind of staid normal colour. And to to have cars in different colours, you need to prime up your factory to be able to paint all the panels. So they have to buy in enough uh, uh, paint to cover that off. So if they think they're going to make 10 green cars, they need enough paint to cover 10 cars. That's it. And... Uh, changing out everything to different nozzles to change different colors is actually quite a big job and they're, they're trying to save money car companies are trying to stop themselves going out of business every day so they're trying to save money so they really reduce the amount of colors they have audi was kind of the first ones i remember doing that they just kind of went down to white silver black and a sort of a, a darker brown or you know these kind of colors they can be mixed real easy in, in the packet um and then they're doing exactly the same thing now getting rid of all the rest of the colors so you're finding less and less colors. Remember the, the Skoda Fabia Monte Carlo uh, and the RS came in a sort of racing green. Was it called Gr- Dragon Skin Green? Sort of superb RS. They came in that color. I think that color is gone as well. It's kind of weird. Uh, Mark Turner Smith is here as well. Good afternoon, Flavonites from all the wet and windy cold in UK. It's the same here. You're already. Right. We're not alone. Jimmy Penrose. Hi, Bob. I became an apprentice mechanic on your YouTube channel, but I should become an apprentice electrician as I drive an EV. I drive an EV as well. My MG put up a video the other day it went semi-viral actually that video on <laughs> I wasn't expecting that um, it actually did better traffic than the open Mocha video which is a brand new car to the market and a brand new first drive and the MG goes up and it's a year old uh, used car and that's done better but uh, yeah I'm an EV driver as well we're driving EVs I've actually chosen to drive the the MG quite a few times over the press cars that have been sitting there just because it's much more comfortable to drive than a lot of them and it heats up straight away and you have heated seats and it's all really straightforward it's a lovely thing you know um, there is a software update I was told multiple people came on to the chat to say that they're an MG owner they've done a software update with their MG people uh, and the, the problems I have with the car will be solved with a, with a software update now good, the cool thing I'm kind of testing here is that's a UK import it's come in from um, it's come in from the UK and it's been brought in by ecocars.e so now getting a software update here means I have to go and interact with, with MG Ireland who seem to be quite quiet about these sort of things <laughs> so we'll see what happens because obviously a car is under warranty a pan-European warranty as it would be normally so it's still under that same warranty although ecocars have offered to do the update for me anyway so it'll happen one more day. we'll get the update done um, uh, once the update is done we want to do more stuff with that car because i want to show it off then again once the update because right now you can't the problems i had was I, co- I can't charge from a type 2 charger while the cars are unlocked it has to be locked to charge that's fixed in the update i can't charge say i can't plan my charging so i can't decide i want to charge after midnight or whenever i get cheaper electricity which i don't at the moment don't have a night rate meter um so I can't do that. That's also fixing the update. And there was something else that's fixing the update as well. Something about the battery management system. And a couple of other things are fixing the update generally. So uh, the update seems to be a big one. Uh, word of warning. Signing up to ESB cars isn't quite as straightforward as they made it out to be. We decided to create a brand new account on ESB cars Just to see what would happen. And lads, it's not that straightforward. <laughs> It really isn't. You have to give them 20 quid, like, straight away. Whether you get electricity or not, you have to give them 20 quid. Mad, isn't it? Like, that's one of the first things. There's David Cuddy. What you say there? Pay as you go. To give them 20 quid for pay as you go, my wife is just reminding me there. David Cuddy's in the chat as well, just became an apprentice mechanic. Are you mad? Come on, we like you. He's a real mechanic, that is. That's a real David Cuddy. <laughs> if you haven't met him, you need to need him. Uh, Andy McAfee is in the house. Paula Connor's in the house as well. 
Um, hiya, Bob and gang. Really enjoyed the Bobcast. Such an honest interview, passion for his racing, and no BS or playing to the audience. Just an inside the realities of racing. Well done to you. That's good. There's there's more of that to come, Andy. Loads more of that uh, interview. David Cuddy's actually going to be another uh, person on the on the podcast at some point as well. Um, it's called Bobcast. If you want to get at us, I, I've put a link in the bio there for streamerlinks.com forward slash Bob Flavin. If you want to go and look at all the links and things that I do be talking about, in among those is the podcast. Uh, it's available everywhere. Anchor has been brilliant to me so far. Anchor's a, a, a streaming service run by Spotify, and literally they have syndicated the thing across everything, including iTunes and all that. So it's available on Apple, it's available on Spotify, it's available on Anchor, but it's also available anywhere you get your podcast, more or less. Uh, apart from the paid subscription ones, which are which are like Acast, I think is the only one that won't be available on for now anyway. Uh, Jason Thompson. Jason Thompson's in the house. He knows himself. He refers to himself as a third person. We like that. That's good. Eric Rocher as well is there as well. The Bob Cast. Yeah, everyone likes that. Uh, Cross 13 got a new car for my dad. His third EV. No MG dealer would give me the price I wanted on a ZS. A Kia dealer made it the right deal on an E Nero. E Nero is a good car. 2021 Air Nero. Same improvements. A 10 inch information from. I see. I still love what Kia do with their cars. I love the E Soul and E Nero. I think both those cars are still probably my favourite electric cars on the market still. The only reason really the MG suited us is well first of all second hand UK but secondly because of the size of the thing it's a proper like little family car thing and then of course it just works you know it just works as a proper family car. We've been driving us here pretty much every day up and around the town staying within the 5k but trying to put as much miles on as we possibly can you know sticking in around Port Leash on some of the back roads. I haven't really driven I'm looking forward to a drive on a motorway on it now see how that range is like because it's about 250 kilometers but like any electric car once they hit the motorway the wind resistance (laughs) just the effort of trying to drive quicker on a motorway normally just shorts that that distance out pretty rapidly it disappears uh, Brian O'Donnell's in there as well. Hi, Bob and Gang. Hope all is safe and well. More cabin space and Toyota CHR than Nissan Juke Gen 1. Yes. Uh, still, the back seats on both of those cars would be relatively small, Brian. Um, the Juke would be slightly smaller and tighter in the back than the CHR. I would prefer the look of the CHR over the Nissan Juke, just, just uh, looks wise, particularly in two tone. Uh, but the new Nissan Juke is a very, very good looking car. And I do like it. I would avoid the 1 litre petrol, but I do like it. Uh, you can get the CHR in a hybrid, which is the one to buy, to be honest with you. The Inside Story podcast. Look at that. We've got a podcast. Oh, that's um, Alex, I think. I think that's what I've been on your podcast. All right. You've created a podcast on YouTube as well. Uh, Irish Foxhound is here as well. Sean Keane. Uh, Bob has tried to review the Peugeot partner with grip control. I will be looking at all the vans this year. Yeah, I've been talking to Peugeot. I've been talking to Volkswagen. Uh, everyone who does vans. I've been talking about vans. I've been doing a, bit, a few more vans this year. Uh, for sure but just because I think vans are I think commercial movements is the thing we want to be looking at now it's particularly when it comes to electric stuff I don't think that's ready yet but I think it's it's on the way there's certainly a couple of companies who are doing electric vans right now and a couple of companies who have predicted they're going to do electric vans I'm not too sure whether that's going to work out or not we just see I think there's a desire for everybody to want to move to electric but just suitability wise the worst thing we can do is if we all suddenly move to electricity and it doesn't quite work out for some of us and some of us are very vocal about it then you'll find that uh, when you have that problem then when you, you give out commercial vans to everybody and suddenly you get five or six carpenters who say no that's just not working for me then you're torpedoing the whole thing I did notice the other day that yeah that um Bus Aaron said they were going to move their buses to hybrid. I think that's a very short-sighted move. I think it's it's great to get rid of diesels off the road, I'm sure, but they're still diesels. So the hybrid ones are just a diesel hybrid, and it's a very short-range hybrid system they're using. It's just, they could have done this right. We could have moved from diesel to electric or to some sort of a hybrid version or hydrogen ver- or something other than just replacing like for like but putting a battery in them. It's the only thing that I see is after happening to them. Uh, it seems like a, let's just say the word greenwashing in some way or another. I don't understand why they're doing that. Uh, Automotive is in the house as well as Martin. Good day, Bob from Bun Cran and Donegal. Well outside there, Liam. You're way up there in the wind. I'd love to go up to Donegal for a weekend. I'd love to just, I'd love to go anywhere actually. Anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> anywhere that isn't work I'd love to go anyway to, uh, 21 feet ago 62.3 thousand subs is that what's on the channel now it's me oh that's me I thought you were about yourself <laughs> thank you yeah it's good it's growing pretty quick it's growing by about 2,000 a month 
uh, at the moment as I, I had a feeling once you get over 50,000 subscribers on YouTube the, the metric changes within the algorithm it's like YouTube kind of starts to trust you a bit more or something and they just send more people your way uh, which is kind of cool actually it's, it's also kind of cool to be mentioned you notice in the analytics that people are, are going to see Johnny Smith stuff and then they're making their way here or they're going to see um uh, Matt and Watson or something they're making way you can see it in the auto in the in the analytics that they're coming via other channels as well and they're leaving me to go to them channels so that's pretty cool uh Gareth Talbot's here as well Colin Whelan Colin McNulty afternoon Reverend Flavin it's good to see you in front of your press uh, in your hot press <laughs> I know it's warm in here it gets warmer and warmer all the time uh Andrew called especially with all the lights on because of lights everywhere so what's the snow all week never did snow on that will you go ahead that was the RSA having a having a heart attack Derek telling us all we're all going to be die you're all going to die watch how you drive in the ice and snow and everything else and then he goes ahead and go what ice and snow <laughs> what are we talking about exactly um uh, Andy McPhee says 12 degrees here windy some big rain eating the snow just away nicely but there's no, no snow at all here it's just really windy and raining it's absolutely tragic out there woke up to this morning really need a break from this weather as well as a break from lockdown we're, we're now facing another six weeks but I reckon of lockdown I mean I don't mean rain but lockdown uh, the rain will ease off seedling I reckon uh, Bob Hawk is looking mad today yeah the Bob Hawk is kind of it's getting out we, we cut the hair but it's starting to grow back really quick so it's starting to stand up as well again uh, thanks John Coleman who's donated by PayPal that's very kind of you thank you very much you're very kind very dependable um, terrific spokesman what do you think of the face of the Randover Discovery 3000 HSE luxury the newest one is that the newest one we're talking about the Land Rover Discovery 3000 the, there's a review of the Land Rover Discovery uh, the latest I don't know it's latest one last year's one on my uh, YouTube channel Discovery's a lovely car it really is um there is some issues with suspension and stuff, but it's always been a really good car. Very dependable. But usually people need them to work though. So be careful what you're buying. Uh, if you're not sure about it, check out the price of tires first. And then you know fairly rapidly whether you can afford one of them or not because tires are not exactly expensive or, or cheap for a discovery. James French is here. Good afternoon, Bob. Father Bob. Hope you're all well. Thanks. Mick Mulcahy's here as well. Ian Burrell. Hi from Slushy Fife. Uh, once EVs become more popular and a normality returns with the charging infrastructure, keeping everyone happy with perfect etiquette exhibited by all, it would be nice. You know, you take away the, the need for etiquette if we had enough charge points. It, you know, I, I just think there's going to come a point at some point in the future, particularly in the summer months, I reckon, when we're all going to the beach for a week or we're all going somewhere that's away from our own home charging point. I do think the etiquette thing is 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 going to become a, a real issue. I think there's going to be fisticuffs to some of the charge points, because once you get down, uh, let's say if you go south from here towards Waterford or over towards the Cork direction, they start to disappear. the The regularity of charge points starts to disappear, uh, and the regularity of good charge points with the other parts of that ones that are actually working and maintained and in a place that's actually useful to you. Because a lot of charge points are at dealerships or. Like I, I've charged at Nissan dealerships and stuff where you're pulling the charge cable over a wall or through a fence to try and get because it's closed. Like, but they just position it wall so you can get at it still. Um, and the same applies for like if you're getting a charge in an industrial state that isn't open, which I've seen there is charge points as well, particularly in the UK, they seem to hide them away into the back end of industrial states. So we kind of need more of this, not necessarily fast charge points, but slow charge points. Uh, and we also need the backing of some of the ma car manufacturers to give more speed at slow charge points. Because some of the charge points, when I say slow, I mean 22. Uh, when um, some of the charge points can charge at 22 kilowatt, but the car can't accept it at that. So it's only Zoe, as far as I know, that can actually charge at 22 kilowatts. So uh, that's always a problem as well, in that you pull up and suddenly it's charging at 7.4 or 6.3 or something your car is and then another car pulls in and all of a sudden you're charged at 4 you know it's like hang on I could be here for 6 hours at this stage so we need a little bit more charge points and I think then the etiquette question goes away when there's 10 charge points and only 4 of them are actually occupied then you have your problem solved immediately uh, Finbar Riley's here as well Joe McKeown says Bob what's the best electric car best depends on what you want it for um, my MG is a relatively short range 250 kilometer one and you can go up to the other end of that scale with say the forthcoming plaid version coming from from Tesla Model S which is 850 kilometers or something which seems like dreamland but it's up there um, middle ground of that is Hyundai Kona the uh, 
the Kia versions of those cars is the middle ground. You kind of 400, 450 kilometers. Uh, and then around there now is a, a Volkswagen ID3 is in around that a little bit more than that. And then the ID4 is on the way. There's the Skoda Enyaq is on the way as well. A lot of stuff on the way. I Like if I was buying a brand new electric car right now, you really have a very narrow field of what you're actually able to buy that you want. It's good distance range for value for money. But from next year, I think it's going to change. And I also noticed this morning, uh, a press release came out from, who was after sending that to me now? I've seen it on Twitter, I think it was. Uh, Elon Musk is building a factory in India, South India, to build cars. Uh, which is another that's another step there's another group of people getting together to make more electric cars which sounds good on paper I don't know what the kind of working conditions are like in, in India but it seems like an interesting idea to stick a factory off out in India whether we'll get those Indian cars or not I don't know but it means you'll have more choice in the market more ability to be able to buy electric cars and right now we need to take the emphasis off the 95 grams of CO2 stuff and all that kind of CO2 thing to let car companies actually make a lot of cars quickly is the most important part um so what's the best electric car is depending on what you want to do, what to spend on your budget you can have anything from about 25 grand all the way up to the other end of the scale up over 100 grand if you want depending on what car you want they're all good in their own little way but it depends whether you want long range or you want something that's handy and easy to use or something that's ultra modern like a, a honda e or something which has all the little screens and stuff inside i think that car would wear very quickly i think I think after you buy a Honda E after about six months of looking at those little screens you'd be kind of going can I just go back to something simple please <laughs> I just want something easy uh, Mimin says Bob in snowy conditions is it harmful to your car to quickly shift your automatic transmission to third or fourth gear to reduce wheel spin when accelerating from standstill no no it's not harmful no your, if it was harmful your car would protect you from it particularly in automatic a car an automatic car usually won't give you a gear if it thinks it's going to damage itself because that would be the car's fault rather than your fault as a driver so they will certainly shift um, pretty quick as it is. Yeah, if you want to reduce your wheel spin when you're taking off, the, probably some of the better ways an automatic to do is just put it in D and take your feet off everything, let the car creep forward, let it get its own pace going forward because it's using the traction control to do it. Uh, or you can shift into a higher gear rapidly. In a manual car, a lot of people would suggest take off in second rather than first. Doesn't always work because sometimes you'll cut the engine out doing that sort of stuff. So it's kind of weird, isn't it? Um... Uh, Hellhound, hey, up, up, thanks for the non-romantic distraction. Get away from romance. Just get the romance out of the way now. Hold on a second. Let's be hairy chested men for a minute. How is it always up to us? I was on the radio the other day, <laughs> three. Um, like the talking man I was on, talking about Valentine's Day for men, what men want for Valentine's Day. And we, of course, we all know what we're looking for Valentine's Day. It's just like, you know, easy time at home. <laughs> it's not do anything. <laughs> Breakfast in bed alone is good, isn't it? Uh, that usual kind of stuff when you're more mature I suppose the things you're after but it's always about women it's, it's always about the uh, flowers they sell out of flowers sell out of cards for women in shops they don't sell out of men's stuff men's underwear sits there unloved on a shelf women's underwear gets sold out in a flash so it's just you know Valentine's Day is more of a women's thing we don't do it in the house which is quite happy to, to keep it that way aren't we you missus you missus in the hall doing all the painting at the moment my missus is painting we couldn't get a painter in to do the house so we missus inside to paint the house <laughs> <laughs> out of boredom I think um, oh and Sweeney hi Bob do petrol testers in Ireland change from summer grade fuel to winter grade fuel during the year or does it remain the same all? it's more or less the same all year round our temperature here is surprisingly static in Ireland I know it feels like we have very cold days and very warm days and we do but the ambient overall temperature doesn't really go too far into the extreme so stuff like winter fuel is usually not really necessary here because we don't get very cold i mean like the coldest here even in a fairly extreme time wouldn't be much beyond minus one like it's, it's minus one minus two that's ground temperature uh, and because everything's kept underground when it comes to fuel particularly in this country we've no need to worry about it freezing under there it'll never freeze anyway uh, whereas in other countries with very extreme high, uh, highs and lows or ones that have very low temperatures extremes it can freeze even in the ground so they do change over from one fuel to the other same with tyres here all season tyres are more than enough here uh, for summer and winter you don't need to be going looking for winter tyres or summer tyres uh, all season tyres will protect you no matter what your car is even if it's a rear wheel drive car you still will have it uh, no video to be on W. Video's on the way. I did two videos this week already, so I didn't want to put out a third one. It would just mess up the algorithm. It would go mad at me. So it will be out next week. BMW 520D. I literally only dropped it back the other day and replaced it with the uh, the Octavia, which is outside right now, which I have to fill in tomorrow before I pick up. I think I pick up a Mazda tomorrow. I think. 
Uh, is the Ionic 5 being announced this week? I'm not sure, Kevin. Ionic is... is There's a new Ionic on the way and they can't make it any worse than the last Ionic. Uh, I know some of you think the last Ionic is deadly. I'm sure it's very efficient and all, but to drive as a driver's car, the current model Ionic, the one I reviewed last year, is probably the worst driving car I've driven in a long time. The, the, the position of the seat is too high. Your head is rubbing along the roof. Uh, the rear suspension is real old fashioned kind of yokes and it feels weird coming off of bumps and going around corners and stuff just as a weird thing so if the new Ionic is coming out I'm sure they'll improve all that because the first Ionic they brought out was great it's a lovely car I thought it was a great car they just seemed to mess it up on the second one I'm not sure why they did that there seems to be enough change in so uh, hopefully it'll look well though um, I haven't seen any pictures of where they're going with it although I have seen people mention it I'm just see if there's any sort of sketches or anything out there that anyone's looking at yet ah uh, there is but they're dreamland stuff maybe maybe how do I do so Carver have a look at that hold on a second window um, and uh, I shouldn't do that uh, Ionic 5 that's the one cut to there that's what we're looking at right now that's Ionic 5 there's a um, teaser shot of it right there looks okay though I think I think it looks fine that one it's a bit weird would you say would you think 2022 Ionic 5 I mean I don't that does not look like a production car to me and certainly doesn't look like anything like uh, the current model Ionic <laughs> it looks completely different um, I don't think that looks production ready yet although ID3 did look weirdly production ready uh, on ready as well same thing but sketches look good whoops press the click that's inside EVs I don't want to be clicking on yeah giving away someone else's thing but that's from top electric SUV that's their sketches and renders so maybe maybe could be good might be weird um, I like Ionic uh, the look of it I just don't like the current model of it Michal is here as well hi Mick uh, afternoon Bob well not there today but at least the temperature starting to improve another great live last night yeah the, we did a live last night on TikTok we did some music live we did 80s tunes for the evening and uh, everybody seemed to have a good fi- good time last night um TikTok is surprisingly like the Wild West, if I'm honest. You can pretty much do anything you want there and people get away with it. It's okay though. It's good fun. Joe McKeown, T is my new car, got it there, good man. Never speak to me again. Never come back onto this channel. Don't unsubscribe, leave me alone. <laughs> you bought a Tita. Oh my god. <coughs> uh, just saying it's a an awful car. I'm sorry, it's awful. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> Run, boy, run. I just shot forward there. Hang on a second. Connor Enright. Has anyone remapped their car? If any issues, dealer servicing insurance. Centers. Yes, you can lose warranty instantaneously if you don't use a registered remapping uh, group and organization. Some people like BMW have the ones that they've chosen that are trained at BMW remapping systems. They get certified. You can remap the car with them and you don't use any warranty. Other ones... Well, you know, you take your own chances with them. So get it done properly. There's very few that I've even come across who seem to have any idea what they're doing. Most of the ones who have dynos, uh, that's a that's a proper dyno, a power at the wheel kind of dyno, would know what they're doing, usually. So be careful with that. Just ask them, are they registered to be able to do, their, do your car before you even start? Because otherwise, what are you remapping for? Remapping is done for two things. You can get better fuel economy. You can get more horsepower. That's essentially the two things you're going to get out of remapping your car. There isn't a whole lot more benefits to it. You can turn certain things on and off in the car in a remapping system, but after that, if that's not one of the two things you want, I wouldn't bother with it. Insurance will go up for it, sure. Uh, Ambrose McGarry says, Bob, I do a lot of trailer work. The best I can have is a Land Rover Disco. There are parts not made of chocolate that would sell to Toyota 10 to 1. It's true, yeah, it's true. They don't put up a long... They put up with a lot of work, they don't put up with it for a long time the discos the the they're a weird sort of blend of you know that's what started the chelsea tractor thing as well there's the ones that people were driving to school bringing the kids to school driving home these things never ever even seen the countryside let alone actually do any work most of those discos were built to withstand that they can do off-road work and they can do a lot of trailering things but realistically not many of them actually end up doing it uh wind and rain and wicklow the sun has literally just come out here I'm, I'm looking out the window what happened to sun it has just rained all day now not today done uh, Colin Whelan my brothers took the new Octavia this week a beautiful motor it looks brilliant yeah weird suspension I just can't quite get, wrap my head around how the suspension seems to be gone wrong blinded now with a big yellow thing in the sky in Kilkenny I know you want to report that to, to the local guard and make sure it's not some sort of flying saucer or something because I haven't seen it 
Uh, Charlie Sturgis, do you think the score of Scala makes sense as by given how good the Octavia is? Well, yeah, is the Octavia good at the end? <laughs> Scala's a nice car. I liked Scala. It's really good value. But then I liked Rapid as well. And I was told by multiple journalists that, oh, no, Rapid's crap. I thought Rapid was actually pretty good. Not a good of it, but Scala's there now. I like Scala. Plenty of room in it. It's probably as big as an Octavia. The Octavia is slightly bigger in boot space uh, and more practical in that sense because... I'd say you probably get a bike in the boot of an Octavia, just an ordinary one with the wheel off the front. Be done. Easy peasy stuff, you know. Uh, so they're really good value in that respect because of their size. Uh, Land Rover isn't bad, just maintain it and avoid a two litre Ingenium four, uh, four cylinder diesel engine. I know the Ingenium engine, it does come up with a, it's a great name, isn't it? It's a great name, but just <laughs> think I can't talk about the Ingenium. Uh, nothing but trouble as far as I can see. Just from general comments on the internet now, not from actual research. Alex McKinney is here as well. Colin Willis says, I'm looking forward to my ID4 in May for my missus. ID4 is the finest electric car I've driven in a long time. Forget about the interior. You can have all the complaints you want about software and everything else. Just from inside the car, from sitting in it and hoovering on road in it, you get the impression that it will be like a tomb. Like just really quiet, really efficient, just gets on with stuff. And you know what? It's not a Tesla, which are becoming quite common now to <laughs> Tesla. There's a lot of them around, isn't it? Uh, and huge amount of negative response to Tesla lately that I see on social media in general you see it across TikTok and, and comments on YouTube and stuff uh, about little door handles that aren't fitting and doors that won't open and things that are frozen shut on winter days and all that kind of stuff that a young car company probably wouldn't have taken into account when they're building their cars it's quite normal it happens to other cars as well but just you know Tesla set themselves up as such a big target in a way such a big big target it's very easy to put them down um Annie McPhee says, Rally Green, Dragon Skin Green, coming superb support line. Yeah, I know. I remember having one on, on the press release. It was gorgeous. God, it was such a good car back then. It seems like years ago. It may have been about five or six years ago. Uh, Automotive Martin says, My question with colour choice. I was running a, uh, was running a VW dealer in London. VW complained my showroom contained black only, but we had to order a year in advance. Saw a lot of cars in black. Black is still a very popular colour in Ireland. Silver is very popular. White is popular. You know, they are mainstay colours, even though people come and look at the press car that you're driving and it's green or red or some colour like that. But if you actually go buy some of the car parks, like Dunn stores and just look in, everything's silver and white. You know, it's just predictable, normal colours. Uh, Alex McKinney says, the MG video is very good. Have you connected your iPhone to it yet? Did it work? Yeah, it worked fine, yeah. Not wireless CarPlay, but CarPlay works fine. Yeah, just plug it straight in and it comes straight up with CarPlay and Android Auto. I tried both of them. Uh, works perfectly well. You don't have to use CarPlay if you don't want to just use a standard Bluetooth. The, the touchscreen is a bit laggy, um, and believe it or not, that's supposed to be fixed in an update as well. But I do find sometimes you touch a thing on the screen, and it takes a minute for that to react to what's actually happening to you. So it can happen, uh, you get that kind of slowness to it, but at least it's all there. Like, everything works on it. Uh, also pointed out was there isn't a heat pump in the MG. I did say heat pump in the video, but I know there isn't one. But there, there isn't an, a heat pump inside the MG, but it does heat up very quickly. There, I've had no complaints with the temperature of it. And of course, there's heated seats, which are almost instantaneously warm. The other thing is the heat pump, the lack of a heat pump does change your range very quickly. Uh, Sting says, hi, Bob. I was wondering if you know what you can do to import a VW from Japan with a two liter petrol engine and it's not on the VRT list. You have to contact VRT directly themselves and tell them what the car is. It's the only way to get a price on it. Uh, you might have some success with because it's all run through the NCT now. So you go to your NCT center to book in your VRT. Um, so you might have some hope with them, but it's unlikely. They really don't want you <laughs> to go near them with a car they don't know. I've seen multiple conversations with people online. Uh, you know, they want to import something a little bit odd, something like a sore or something like that that probably doesn't exist on VRT sites. Uh, and they don't, uh, they're not very good at, at doing it. But the only way to do it is contact revenue themselves as they control all the VRT system. Let me know how you get on with that Japanese import because I'd like to know because... Lots of people are asking about Japanese imports and American imports as well, importing a car directly from America, which I've had a little bit of information on that. A fellow pointed out that if you import it to Amsterdam, into uh, Holland, that you only pay 10% import duty from America, but it's 30% here. And then you, once you paid your tax in Holland, you can bring it over here because that's the EU and you've paid your tax once, you only pay it once. That's it. Just wonder if that's actually going to be a saving. Um, the life of batteries. Can you sit in it while charging on Type 2? You couldn't until the update. You can sit in it to lock the doors. Though. It wouldn't charge with the doors unlocked. You could sit inside and lock the doors and turn off the interior 
uh, alarm system and you can sit there all you want but as soon as you open the doors obviously everything stops again so <laughs> getting in and out's a problem uh, now the update has solved that for MG in that you can lock the doors or unlock the doors it will continue charging I'm not sure why I know there's an electric, electrical discharge thing I'm not sure why it goes off a lot of cars when you're locking and unlocking the car will cut off the charger uh, other cars um, don't I noticed that on some of the press cars here only on type 2 on fast chargers seem to just pour it in they don't care how do you become an apprentice mechanic? You just sign up for the uh, channel sponsorship. You can do it here or over on Patreon if you want as well. Patreon's the same sort of benefits if you want. Uh, I make a bigger cut of the apprentice mechanic stuff and all of things from Patreon than I do from YouTube, but it doesn't matter. Either one's fine. Um, track M97 have an interview to become an apprentice mechanic on Tuesday. Any tips? No, just do it. My strong advice to you if you become an apprentice mechanic at the moment is do not sit in your laurels don't hang about for four or five years just tinkering around with big greasy engines really keep an eye on things like hydrogen uh, electric uh, stuff engi electrical engineering any of that kind of stuff move on very quickly because i don't see a really v long term future for greasy engines anymore we seem to be getting rid like some of the oldest cars on the road that are still common now are only about 20 to 30 years old so realistically 20 or 30 years from now we won't see a whole lot of the cars we've got currently on the road it'll all be changed and if you're not keeping an eye on what's moving forward what's moving what's moving very quickly forward you're going to have to be uh, aware that you might be out of a job in a few years time as they shrink down the amount of people looking for for mechanical work or whatever it is in the country i mean right now I've fifty percent of my cars is fully electric. <laughs> That's happened in one single year, and the chances are the the Leon will be gone by next year as well, and we'll replace that with a full electric car. So either way, we're probably going to be electric over the next while. So being a mechanic right now, what are you going to do with an electric car? Well, it's currently got brakes, suspension, and the undercarriage and stuff is all the same as a normal car. Just the batteries and the motors are all different. But realistically, I'd imagine they're they're looking at new suspension systems, new braking systems. As we barely touch the brakes in that MG, we drive around a town with level three turned on. You just decelerate, you take your foot off, and the car just uses resistance, gives you back power, and you don't need the brakes. Nestor, thank you very much for the uh, super chat. Thank you, great donations, boys. Lovely to have you all along again today. Um one car from japan actually the only in uh, interview technique thing is if, if you really want it if you really want it you'll get it that's essentially it be the person who wants to get the job that's all uh cross says uh one car from japan is pretty we don't get the nissan note e-power yeah i know i was saying that the other day it's a non-charging C or series hybrid wheels run by leaf motor only nothing with that style of powertrain on the eu market there's a lot of work going on in those kind of ones not in the eu market but in that in that nissan nissan are really pushing ahead if Nissan had enough money, I think we'd all be electric by now. <laughs> you know that? I really do. They're doing the research they're doing in on stuff right now, and the kind of the way that they're approaching things is is mildly different. They're very vastly different in some cases than what other car companies are willing to try. Uh, it's a shame they don't. They're not pushing it in EU sense. I think some of that's still coming down to our ninety five grams CO two and the CO two emissions things and and the Volkswagen connection to the German governments and all that kind of stuff that's sitting around the background. It's a bit awkward, really. Thomas Heiler says, Good day, Bob. Things are great here in New Orleans. Love the EVM reviews. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? New Orleans. New Orleans. I'd love to be anywhere else other than Ireland at the moment. <laughs> Graham Harren says, uh, Afternoon, Bob and all. Having some trouble with the Subaru Legacy Outback 2012 DPF. Any thoughts on my options? Independent clearing service, independent removal or Scooby dealer? Well, what's the the problem is it's probably blocked or it's blocking or it can't do its dpf cycling which is probably what's happening because that's happened a lot of people right now because we're not driving we're sitting around at home ticking over in the driveway is the best the car is getting done at the moment um one thing you can do is go for a real hard and fast drive and blow out the dpf in other words force a regen on it the other alternatives are as you say independent cleaning which can be done quite reasonably priced now you can get an independent people to go and do cleaning for you um or you can have it gutted you will fail an nct if you don't have it have a dpf there uh lots of young guys out there are gutting their dpf which means they're taking the inners out of it so it doesn't exist anymore uh but the deep the physical look of a dpf is still there now that will probably fail nct's from next year as they're bringing in a infrared sensor thing a laser sensor thing that senses temperature of it and you'll be able to tell if the dpf is filled or not so i wouldn't do that Subaru dealer yeah possibly you don't need a Subaru dealer to fix a DPF DPFs are common they're, they're pretty much everywhere but I wouldn't replace one unless I really need to they're expensive 
Connor Crowley considered an ID3 in 2023 when it's time to change my T Rock, but I have no designated park as best outside my house. I don't think a home charger is an option and missed the rest of that. We've missed the rest of that, Connor. Um, home, if you have an apartment or you have a flat or you don't have a place you can park a dedicated parking space, electric cars for home use are still a problem. Still, within reason, a problem because a lot of people have a house but nowhere to park the car. So they park it on the street, which means you can't put in a home charging unit uh, and you won't get planned permission to put one in outside your your fence or and if you're going to trail cables across the ground it's going to be your fault every single time so it is still a problem we still need legislation around this and we need inventions around this sort of thing how can we do it how can we make this happen really there's a number of ways we could easily do this uh one good little technical york i've seen recently which i think has been done in america at the moment is uh, so you can plug into any now ev box are also rolling this out here as well so you can basically plug into any charge point and use an app that will build back to your house no matter whose charge point it is so you can plug into an ordinary charge point on the street a public charging one coming off a street lamp or whatever it is uh, and that that can charge because of the app you can charge it back to your house anyway so that's the kind of universal idea we actually really need behind this because even when i was signing this morning to the esb e-cars it just seemed so unnecessary to have to sign, to sign up everything and give them 20 quid just to use a charge point sometime in the future that I may never actually use because we're going to charge a home as much as possible. Um, whereas if I could just rock up to a charge point and just scan my Apple Pay or even now my Garmin Pay or whatever pay you want to use, just go dink, just pay for what I use. That's what you want, really. That's the dream. And I really think that's what we need to be pushing for at all times. No more of this account. The only reason you open an account is to get a bigger discount. That would be suitable. Uh, so if you want to give them, I don't know, a tenner a month or something, and you, you get a, a 500 kilometers free charging if you give them money a month, whatever they, way they work it out. But I think the, the pay per use one should just be dink, pa, uh, tap and go. Uh, love Bobcast, such a relaxing listen to some great laughs. Would recommend Bobcast to anyone. I also agree, Anchor is a great service. Yeah, that's uh, Inside Story Podcast. I was on that podcast as well. I've been on a few podcasts over the last while, so I'll pop out now in the next few weeks. I'll pop out all over the place. Uh, but my own one is Bobcast, which you can get on basically anywhere, iTunes or otherwise. And it's just Max Hart this week. Next week is Paddy McGrath, photographer of cars worldwide for speed hunters and everything else. An Irish fella, does a lot of work here as well with the Volkswagen Group on their cars. Most of the press photography you see uh, around the Volkswagen Group cars is done by Paddy McGrath. So he's a, a super photographer and we talked about everything to do with cameras, getting into the business, trips, what they're like out there, the journey of going for, to and from car shows and stuff as well. So we talked about a lot of stuff as we both kind of operate in the same zone. I, I deal more of video he deals with uh, photography, but same sort of thing. Life of Batch says new Lexus UX has a Chatamo connector. Big mistake in the EU. Bloody right it is. Sure, they're taking out Chatamos at this stage and replace them all. We don't. Is there a Chatamo? Oh no, I think there is one. In Port Leash Plaza has the two newest charge points that I can think of. Uh, one of them is 150 kilowatt, the other one's 50 kilowatt right beside that. I think the 50 kilowatt one has a Chatamo connector. I, the 150 is CCS, 100%. There's only one cable and it weighs a ton. That, that massive cable weighs a ton. Uh, it's really heavy. But yeah, the Lexus UX, I don't know why they've gone with Chatamo. I mean, it's the only thing that's disappearing here is Chatamo. Uh, which is, again, another unfortunate thing that we have to go like... It's like VHS and Betamax, isn't it? Which one are we going to pick? But it's, it's CCS here in, in Europe, for sure. Uh, Mark Turner-Smith. Bob, have to show people pictures of the mid-90 Mark III Paula Harlequin. Also Mark III Golf in some markets. VW just done a current shape Paula Harlequin. Not for sale, just for car show. Never even heard of it. Do you know that? Never even heard of that car. Uh, Polo Harlequin. Jeez, that's awful. <laughs> the, what would I think? <laughs> Why would you want that? Like, I wouldn't want that. That would frighten me. If I had that now, I think I'd just, I'd just paint it a different colour. That's upsetting. That's what that is. <laughs> that really is. <laughs> Polo Harlequin. Ah, well, I'll, I'll stop disturbing you with that look. <laughs> That'll keep you thinking for a while, all right? Never heard of a polo. I've seen them pictures before. I didn't know it was actually called a polo har harlequin. But yeah, you should have kept that to yourselves. <laughs> afternoon, Derek Norris. Uh, good to have you. MMMMM. Hello, Bob. Good afternoon. Any tips for buying a car when your credit isn't the best? Your only hope is to try and get a friendly dealership who can deal with you. Uh, depends on how bad your credit has actually been. What it's, what it's like if, if it's a defaulted thing, if you actually defaulted on something and it's gone by, you know, a couple of years or to pass it by and you still haven't paid for it, 
you have very little chance these days. Although you will find some sympathetic dealers, particularly if they're dealing with directly with the car companies' credits, like Volkswagen Bank or Renault Bank or one of those actual car banks. Some of them will go through history a little, a little bit better with you. They'll just go through, rather than going by the Credit History Bureau, they'll go through history 100%. The other alternative is to put down 50% of the price of the car and try and finance the rest of it. So you've already got a large investment of cash in the car uh, before you go looking for a bank. Um, after that, you're kind of stuck with going to your own bank and trying to get a credit loan there, which is quite difficult. As credit is very high on cars at the moment. Good God, there's a lot of money out there. Uh, Frank Gooding, how much for the ZS seen massively cheaper in the UK? They are used here probably 25 to 26 grand and then upwards from that 28 29 will get you a brand new one entry level and then the higher spec ones i think it's executive or exclusive or something it's called is about 35 between the two so they're they're, they're not cheap but then no electric cars cheap they're all expensive at the moment um they're bringing up the price of ice engine cars to match where electric cars are so there's no cheap petrol car out there either so it's kind of weird what's actually happening out there but the zs is more expensive here because of vrt it's always the same in this country vrt and taxes here in general is ripping us off and making cars look vastly more expensive than they are in the uk and now when you're trying to import from the uk it's about 10 percent import duty as well which means they are expensive. Uh, Cross 13, some Nissan e-power options for EU market are rumoured to be on the way. Nissan are supposed to be dropping the diesel and petrol only options for all e-power EV range. I'd say you're going to hear that story more and more this year, um, not just from the e-power stuff, but you're also going to hear more from more and more car companies announcing they are just going 100% electric. Uh, and that will happen. I, I, I think really all that's actually stopping them right now is eu legislation is just the fact that the eu not legislated properly for electric cars yet and there's no real reason to push forward in that respect that they haven't done it uh they're still going on the co2 emission stuff so they're still making diesel and petrol cars quite regularly uh alex mckinney i'm looking at the mg exclusive six month orbit 1009 miles for 1950 how much does it cost to get a company to hook up the electric box do you know uh electricity well that's pounds you're putting up there i don't know how much it's going to be if it's the uk you're in i don't know how much they are there but here they're about 1200 euro half of that or give or take half of that is usually uh granted by our organizations here so you cost about half that whatever the full price is less half of the price you get about 700 euro grant here for uh putting it in um it's worth don't buy an electric car unless you have a home charger I'm telling you, you will spend a fortune on electricity if you're going to charge on the street. It Just forget about it. It's not worth it. You will probably save money if you're doing a lot of long-range driving or a lot of commuting on a daily basis. But if you're a short-range driver in general and you're going to charge on the street, you're probably going to spend as much on street charging as you will on just uh, a diesel, uh, just an ordinary diesel car. Uh, if you go to... Um, charge points right now it's about 28 cent for a charge per kilowatt at home it's about 13 cent it's quite different uh, and you can get less than that if you go for night mate, night rate meters it might be down to eight cents seven cent per per kilowatt so you can save an awful lot of money charging at home but you will not save a whole lot of money if you charge regularly on the street particularly if you use fast chargers forget about it you might as well buy a diesel and use fast chargers all the time they're not meant to be there all the time to be used uh noel finnegan bob which Electric car, would you pick Skoda, Enyaq, or ID4? Which would be the best between the two to use a taxi? We can avail it to grant ID4 would be the taxi one, just because the Skoda Enyaq is more of a more of an SUV shape. The ID4 is more of a big estate car. You'll fit a lot of luggage in the back of that. The Enyaq, uh, I haven't driven the newest one of the Enyaq. Still not in Ireland to drive yet. I've only been in the pre-production one, and it looked great in pre-production. It looks great in the pictures. Enyaq looks a little bit more stylish, I think, than ID4. But I do think the ID4 is going to have such a big boot space and a massive back seat uh, so as taxi wise goes i would go with id4 in a heartbeat there it's affordable too mind you andy mcafee knowing not that it's bobcast or any of the pub quiz things info to share such things via youtube like status updates can do yeah it's often because it's so fast moving there's so much stuff going on at once it's easier just to put on streamerlinks.com forward slash bob Lavin, which is just because all the links go into one big block of things and just find what you're looking for in it but i can do it on the, on the status update as well uh just to show you what the streamer links look like uh, streamerlinks.com. I'll show you what I mean. 
So you can see it here that there's Bobcast, Podcast by Me, YouTube, Merch, oh, Bluetooth readers, the journal, made Spotify playlists, all that, all that kind of sense. Just tons of stuff that you can go. So many different links to come out regularly out of the stuff. But the podcast itself is here, uh, which takes the anchor link at the moment, but you can open it in um it's in Spotify as well if you want to do that. There it is there, Bobcast. That's our new logo. That's my new logo there. It's a BF in the thing. Cool, huh? Uh, but it is there. So that is the episode on um, streamer links uh, on the podcast. If you want to get into that thing, it's pretty good. It's only one episode. Next week's episode is, it will be out on Friday. Uh, it is already recorded. Actually, the next three weeks are already recorded. Just telling you now. Just so you know, there'll be enough stuff going on for ages. Teletubbies getting me down. So as far as I can say, they're laying the foundations of suicidal tendencies. At a minimum, I'm becoming extremely nihilistic. That's David Cuddy. <laughs> nihilistic stick with that one believe in nothing that's what you need to do that's what that's what that's about um looking at who's answering who now alex mckinley for the exclusive where okay at least where that was you were talking about mg exclusive six months old eco try if you're in ireland alex try ecocars.e and um, that's where the, they've got my car the car i'm actually driving is listed there if you want to get in touch with them uh they're really good ecocars.ie check them out for your mg uh, they're experts in it. They're the ones who brought my one. Uh, DB Cooper, Volvo XC40, pure electric price discounts. Uh, there's no discounts. Forget about discounts on new cars at the moment. There, and even used cars. <laughs> there really isn't much money in new or used cars. I don't know why prices are so high at the moment. other Because there isn't much demand. But just getting, um, getting the prices up of anything seems to be a bit of a problem. Uh, still coming soon in Ireland. This is the Volvo we're talking about right now. That's the pure electric Volvo XC40. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I hate all those things. They, I always have to accept every goddamn thing when you get to any size. I always accept everything. Anyway, there it is. The Volvo XC40 Recharge. Our first pure electric SUV. Very pretty looking car. They say 418 kilometers range. I would take that with a massive grain. Maybe even a punnet of salt if I'm honest with you because the XC40 is not exactly a light or easy looking sized car it's not really svelte or aerodynamically shaped or anything like that so I can't imagine getting as much range as some of the Tesla stuff out there or anything like that that's it just seems crazy everyone says 40 minutes charge 80% they all say that uh, and I forget about horsepower I don't even think about those things 4.9 is a normal time to not to 100 that's pretty good um, it does look exciting. I do think the XC40 is probably one of the prettiest cars. There's a colour. Look at that colour. You got a coloured one as well. Uh, I do think the XC40 is one of the prettiest looking cars on the market today. I'm still not sure about the filled in grill, but that's a modern thing that they do these days to try and uh, differentiate themselves. Looks good. No price for Jet. No, no price. Bob, aren't theory tests essential? They're not really, Frank. Unfortunately, because you have to go into a big room with a group of other people, they're not going to clean them after you. They would have to clean everything every single time that you sat down to do it, and they would have to clean it. So that's what's going on with the, with the theory test. At the same time, there is a built-up angst among people to get a theory test. I know it's happening. I know I can sense it among people it's just who just want to get on and get their license, and there's already a waiting list for it. Really, we want the theory test to move online. That's what should happen. It should have happened ages ago. We shouldn't be waiting for theory test now. It should be completely online. It would be so much easier to do what they already do. The commercial tests online, college courses are online. Everything is online. There's no reason why the theory test can't be online as well for cars. Really straightforward. Uh, Neil Gascoigne is answering Alex M. £400 to £1,000, including the grant card of Neil Gascoigne, for a home charger. James Dunn, is it better to get a car serviced with the manufacturer if it's under warranty? It doesn't matter. Technically, legally, it doesn't matter where you're getting it serviced. It's still under warranty. Warranty is not affected by, by parts or use. That's one thing dealerships don't tell you. But if you want to make sure that you never have an argument about warranty, then you should get it serviced in the main dealer. So that's you never have that argument where it serves right now if it's got a main dealer stamp in history already. But just be sure, because a lot of that service history stuff now is going online. A lot of stuff is, is sitting down. The service department puts it in online. Be sure it's actually there. Because I've seen people uh, tweet me and, and come at me on Instagram and all and ask about service history and car going to can't get it because it was never uploaded by the dealership. So it's definitely happening out there. So make sure it's actually getting done for you when you're doing your car service. But generally speaking, I'd push people towards the main dealer when the car is under warranty. Particularly the warranty bit is the one you want to keep nice and straight. Carl Rice says, Hi Bob, love your shows. Uh, don't comment much, but your stuff is great. Thank you. 
I've had an EV for many years. I've had many charger horror stories. Keep up the good work. Yeah, there's loads. There is loads. In fairness, any time I've had an EV and have gone to go charging somewhere, there's always that moment in your head to say, do I have my charge? Do I need to charge? Is the charger going to be working when I get there? There's always this thing that's going on inside your head the whole time. And it's very weird to see uh, that it still goes on, which I find it very strange as well. Bloody hell, there's a lot of you here now. Uh, click the like button. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're so kind. I love you. Uh, thanks, Chris McCartan. You're very good. That's a very generous offer from you to, to give us a super chat. Very good of you. Um, MG5 looks very interesting. I need the MG stuff is coming out. And there's another company as well in Norway that's come in as well. Is it X something or Xiaomi? Not Xiaomi, not Xiaomi, that company, but no, X Peng or something like that. They've come in in Norway. They're doing interesting things and look at their cars too. As we predicted a few times, um, we've come across uh, electric cars that are coming out from China that's going to look um, very good on paper at least. But Chinese are making a lot of the batteries, they're making a lot of technology behind it. So there's a lot going on in that area. Um, camera bob looking hd bit dim though it's dim is it okay well, it looks great on my screen it might be a little bit tiny bit dim because i was adjusting some of the colors and things today if i start adjusting the colors again now i'll be all over the place because it's very it urgently changes one click and you're in the dark so <laughs> we'll go with the color <laughs> at the moment we'll be all right and uh, the camera is um a webcam sitting up there Alex, thanks James Dunn as well. I might not have mentioned James Dunn. He donated by Super Chat. Alex McKinley, Bob, using your crystal ball, how long will it take for electric cars start paying for road tax? They'll never. Well, they don't pay road tax. Road tax is not is not road tax anymore. Road tax is an environmental charge for the CO two coming out the back of your car. That's the CO two offset essentially. So it's not really motor tax anymore. It's not definitely not road tax. Uh, so it is uh, all tax goes into a great big bucket, and then it's just hoovered up by various departments to use the tax so uh, it can be a little bit odd when you're talking about road tax but it's actually environmental tax currently electric cars in ireland anyway pay 120 a year for tax that's it uh in the uk i think they're negated for the first couple of years there's some sort of a weird clause in the uk that has gone for a couple of years then it's, then it's back again finbar riley thank you very much for the donation never super chat it's very kind of you you can do it by paypal as well if you want there's all kinds of links down below if you want to donate anything to anywhere or follow any of the links you'll find links down below in the comments um you'll never the other problem we have with, with everybody moving to electric if everybody moves to electric and we don't we don't adjust the tax system because right now petrol and diesel cars make a lot of money in tax uh excise duty on fuels themselves then you have motor tax where some people are paying 500 quid a year and maybe more there's all kinds of stuff that's going on with those with those uh with the tax system if we keep moving on to electric they're going to have to do something the government never loses right revenue never loses on tax they've got they will claw it back somewhere else which is what i'm a little bit worried about in what they're going to claw it back from whether they're going to claw back from a, a tax on electricity your home electric tax or whether they're going to up the price of something else or or motor tax will go up to go with it or whatever you want to call that environmental tax will go up along with it i don't know it's hard to say um Graham Harren says second generation seven seaters are mad money. Nice spec, said Alhambra, VW Galaxy prices are heavy. Pity most first generations like 807s with captain's shares at the end of their life cycles. Yeah, they're getting rid of all the seven seaters. All the old predictable ones that would have been sought out for family use, uh, which are like minibuses. And that's exactly what they're doing. They're moving into the minibus levels. Uh, so, you know, like Peugeot and, and Hyundai and Kia, they all bring out a small eight seat car. Um, they want to stay away from nine seats the maximum I think you can have or eight seats the maximum you can have in a car anyway uh, under a B license um, so they're, they're moving into those kind of ones rather than actually bringing out a big because they just have to make vans then vans with seats so they have to make one car and put seats in it whereas with Ford Galaxy or whatever they have to make a different car entirely uh, bloody hell the super chats are flying in thanks William Bellingham, Bellingham thank you very much uh, for Valentine's Day of course and go and buy something for your wife very quietly just nip out and buy some. I don't know, we don't buy them. <laughs> we stay away from the buying stuff. Uh, Cross says plenty of long range EV coaches available suitable for bus airing. Absolutely. About five or six Chinese models to the BYD C9. I stood in that up in, uh, not the C9. It was a BYD version one. It's in it's in Dublin. Uh, one model. The Bright Sun has a thousand kilometer range. Fixed bus does intercity in Germany with EV buses. I totally agree with you we've completely that should have been legislated for we've already had dublin bus replace a lot of their fleet with diesel buses again just before a tax came in uh, and now we're looking at bus airing 
moving so slowly from diesel to hybrid without any real thought into how we could do it electrically instead of even hanging out for another year which it could have easily done they could have hung back for one more year sent out trade people out as far as far flung in the world to see how it's actually happening out there there's so many choices right now particularly in a commercial sense of having electric and even hydrogen should we wanted to uh, we could have gone that route in one single slot I mean, right now we're looking at replacing all these buses with with hybrids. And it, I don't think it's going to make a blind bit of difference to the amount of pollution coming out of them. I really don't. I think I think it's just sort of a greenwashing thing. Just a step say now we're all hybrid. I bet you to write it on the side of the bushes. Mark my words. Next year you'll see the buses on the road and say, this is powered by hybrid or some crap on the side of it. And we'll all be laughing at it because going, why isn't it electric like at this stage? Uh, Ionic 5 comes out on the 15th. Does it? Right. Well, then we're looking forward to that one. Right. We'll have to see that. Although Hyundai, I don't think you're talking to me after I reviewed their electric car last year. <laughs> we'll see. Everybody comes back eventually. Uh, all right, Bob. Much respect from Jolly Old England. Good man, Ryan. Thank you very much. Alex McKinley says, uh, Hi, England's free road tax review cars. Is it free? Why would the free? Why free? I don't get it. Uh, and I have a problem with that free thing. Not I'm I'm an EV driver as well, so I'll be, I should be lobbying for free tax. But I don't actually agree with free tax because they still use as much road as any other car out there. So if you want to go back to the road tax effort, EVs are four to five meters long and bigger, right? So they're taking up as much space on the road as any petrol diesel car. Um, they they do in a, in their own little unique way emit CO two not directly from the pipe but they certainly do by by charging up by getting electricity into them in their manufacture to begin with so there is a certain amount of environmental tax to it it's a nice encouragement and you might say that for the last twelve months you could possibly the first twelve months you could have free electricity or free tax or free something rather than saying just free and I don't think they should be using bus lanes I think that's a stupid idea uh, I don't think we should be able to do anything special like green plates or anything. nothing none of that I think that you just replace the cars we have and leave it at that don't be encouraged encourage people into them but do it on a temporary basis give them a temporary idea that this is a good idea for now don't don't uh, go too mad after that there's Paul has become an apprentice mechanic as well thank you very much Paul good man uh, we like our mechanics around here any plans for getting yourself an EV and why? I already have one. It's MGZS. Uh, EcoCars.ie provided me an MGZS for 12 months to mess around with and use as my own car. And to be honest with you, using it as your own car is a completely different system than driving around in a press car. It really is. In a press car, you're looking at things, you're assessing your in your own car. You get in, you get out, you just drive it around, you go to the shops, you come back. You do all the stuff you would do normally, every single day, and you don't even think about it. Uh, and then you realise just how easy it is to use an EV if you have a home charger and if you're not going very long ranges. If you're going long ranges, there is a big shift you've got to make in your mind uh, to deal with charging and not charging and whether a charger works and how long you're going to be there and where the chargers are. And that's sort of, that kind of mind shift, that's only a mind shift, you get used to it. Um, and uh, range anxiety is actually a thing. It really is. Yesterday, I had to go out yesterday uh, and I decided to take the petrol car, which is the Skoda, rather than the MG because I didn't think there was a charge point where I was going to. So <laughs> I didn't bring it. <laughs> it's just it's just in your mind. You go, no, I don't think I'll, I'll bring the other car. Just not use that part. The long range stuff is, is yet. Now, it's also down to lockdown as well. And that lockdown has taught me not to go very far or not to be thinking about touching things or holding things or picking up you know, charge points, all that sort of stuff. Um, don't forget the old like button. Yes, Eric, you're dead right. Like button. Uh, what is car remapping? It's changing this. It's changing the response of the electronic parts of the car to control the combustion engine. So, in a, in a, you can do this in electric cars. You can remap electric cars, maybe go faster as well. But uh, you can remap a car for fuel economy or for extra horsepower. But that's kind of as far as remapping goes. You're just changing the torque response ratios. It's all electronic inside the car because electronically a car. Uh, you've heard. I'm sure you heard of electronic limiting on a car. That's electronics inside the car that limits what everything's happening inside the combustion part of the car. Uh, is MG the new Kia? Um, no, not really. I would say MG is more kind of dropping into the bottom end of Renault, in that kind of Renault-Dacia point. Uh, they've got everything inside the car, like they've got all the sat-navs and all the touchscreens and all that stuff in it, but they're not connected up in a big way. You know, there's so many... Uh, screens and things inside it but it, they're not really connected to one another so I think it's more like a Dacia idea uh, it really is about about Chinese companies coming in 
to the car market of Europe. And I think that's going to happen more often. I would suspect by next year we'll see Saab coming back as an electric car. Uh, not necessarily an actual product, but I think there'll be a point where they'll go with Saab as a trusted brand and uh, people will, will expect a good car from them. Like, look at Polestar at the moment. They've come out now. The car's way too expensive and there'll be very few of them made. So there's a lot of, a lot of work going on around Polestar but realistically there's not many of them on the road <laughs> there's one or two saw one the other day I wasn't terribly impressed by the look of it up close once I actually seen the car looked at the car went, yeah well just looks a bit like a Volvo really doesn't it uh, why wouldn't Volvo make an S60 into an electric car be the same thing um, sorry that sounds very dismissive of Polestar I don't mean that but I mean it just doesn't look like this fantastic thing that everyone's going on about it's more the name I think catches everybody uh, Jordi La Forgery Hi Bob, that's a good name. Uh, thoughts on a Honda 2017 HRV SE petrol manual 1.5 liter, approximately 3,500, 35,000 miles. Uh, I like what Honda was doing with the HRV all along. It was a nice car. I don't like Honda's electronic interface. I don't like their sat nav system. It's too complicated. It's too old. It nearly looks like something that was like 1980s kind of stereo stuff. Um, it all works, but I, I don't like the interface. But the rest of the car will be bulletproof for you. The petrol engine is actually Honda's own engine, so you'll have no problem with that. Hondas are dependable as all uh, cars, that kind of so far. Uh, new followers there as well on other platforms. Don't forget, you can find me on Instagram. You can DM me there. Twitter, less so. Uh, don't tweet as much as I used to. Although I am there, I do tweet every once in a while. Just put me straight in at the top of my list of doing things. Uh, TikTok is where... The action is that for everybody. There's lots of uh, more mature people on TikTok these days than there was before. For sure. The match kicks off at 3 o'clock. Does it? I mean, for, I forgot all about the match. It's on now, so. Uh, we'll have a look at this. Ireland v France in a little bit. Um, where was I there? Is that her popping forward on me again? Thanks very much for popping forward. No problem with that. Uh, it's absolutely lashing down here in Birmingham. It's it's gone bright here weirdly <laughs> it's amazing uh alan downey got a pug 3008 good car yeah uh 2014 the door great motor your review helped thanks a lot great show that's deadly yeah it's a good car that 3008 i always like them antonio blaney what's your opinion on the suzuki jimny which year are we talking about jimneys have been cool throughout all history the older ones well they're often treated very harshly they're super 4 by 4s the older little small engine ones but they wouldn't pull you out of bed if you want to actually tow anything a chimney's not going to do it those smaller engines they'll just, just sit down and don't know where they're going uh, the newer one I never drove beautiful looking car looked deadly on paper Johnny Smith bought one I think um, but I never actually drove it I don't know uh, so I have no idea but I like to look at them Patrick Watts says Captain Super Ball is so comfortable a really good product would recommend I actually have one inside in New York uh, award here one week actually what happened to Chrysler? Ran out of money. That's the usual problem for most American car companies. The only car company who has never gone bankrupt in American history is Ford. It's the only one. All the rest of them have all gone bankrupt at some point and been bailed out. That's normal. Uh, Dave Comaru. What's that mean? That's Welsh, I recognise, but I, I don't know what Comaru actually means, which is terrible. Uh, I need to check in on that match now before I go any further. Just just checking. Uh, is it on TV3? No, it's not TV3. What do you call it? Virgin Media now. Uh, Virgin Media Television yes it is just going to check on a match to make sure we're all okay I don't see them playing yet bloody ad break it's always the way isn't it <laughs> ad break straight in um, anyway Ryan Laffin what do you think of the self-charging hybrid avoid or good choice it depends what you want really self-charging hybrid is just a hybrid uh, you just don't plug them in I get the best from plug-in hybrids because I always do actually plug them in. That's pretty much me. And the BMW ones are able to recharge themselves. So you press a button and it holds onto a charge and re uses spare power in the engine to recharge as well. But self-charging ones don't. I like the Corolla. I really like the new Yaris, which is a really good little car. They're very, very good. And I can get the best of them because I live within a town limit where I could nearly I could walk to a lot of shops here so uh, you could easily use a hybrid in that situation to do that job for you uh, and they're good value and if you really want to just stick with that petrol feel that kind of idea just driving around the place sure what's the big deal it's be fine you know how long are you going to haul out the car five years but in five years time there's going to be so many electric cars in the market that you can choose from it'd be an easy step then it'd be cheaper too um, Antonio says what's your opinion on brand new Stellantis what new models do you want to see in the future uh, it's currently nil all, by the way. Just, just, just saying. Relax. It's okay. We're nil all. Nothing's happened. Uh, Stellantis. Stellantis stuff. Actually, I was looking at it the other day. The Stellantis stuff is kind of weird, isn't it? I can't quite make out what they're going to do. 
<laughs> I really can't make out what's what's going to happen. Um, like they're ta- back, they're back in Chrysler and downplay his chance of a U.S. return for Peugeot. You know, it just seems weird what they're at. I, I just don't know what they're trying to to achieve. Um, it seems like a, a a lot of action has been taken, but nothing's really happening either. I'd like to see more stuff come out for them for sure, and I really want to see some action on. Like making good product, which is the bit that's really bothering me at the moment, is a lot of car companies just making electric cars for sake of having an electric car. They're not really making a good electric car. Some of the older car companies are making good ones, like, you know, Peugeot are at some good stuff as well. Uh, certainly Volkswagen and Skoda, Audi are at it too. That Volkswagen group feel is really pushed forward in what they want to do. So that's good to see coming, but we, we don't need like hundreds of brands of electric cars in the market because the market will just die. The, the choice will become so wide that no one will buy anything. That will happen too, you know. Uh, David G. Mass is a great second-hand car. It's clogging up lots over here in North Wales, Bob. used to be great market just across the water. 10% extra, Dave. This was after happening there. If it's first registered in the UK, if you import it directly to the UK to here, uh, you have to pay a 10% VAT, or pay VAT and 10% uh, excise charge or import duty, whatever they call it, in on top of the car. So... Every car has gone by 10%. That's what's happening right now. And until the dealerships figure out a way that they can either absorb that 10% or change the 10%, then that's the only way over. That's just Brexit's caused that. And the other flip side of that is if it's first registered in Northern Ireland, that 10% doesn't exist, it disappears. So everybody's looking at Northern Ireland now for the used cars, and yet they don't have many up there. So it's a bit of a problem, you know. Uh, Bob, how come there's nothing out there about the cost of replacing batteries really worries me? There's very little out there, Edward, because no one's really replaced the batteries or needs to replace the battery yet. Not saying you won't ever have to. Most batteries come with a seven or eight year warranty on them straight away. I don't know anyone who's used, no one's contacted me to say who's used that eight year warranty, whether anyone has or not. Uh, I don't suspect they're a big deal. A bit like replacing the motor on your car, the engine on your car. Uh, you know, can you get one? You can get one if you really want one, for sure. But uh, whether it's going to become an issue in the future with electric cars, I don't know. Some of the early ones had really bad um, retention of power in the battery. So, you know, a very early Nissan Leafs losing 30% or 40% of their, their range in their lifetime was common. The battery technology has moved on very quickly since then. And now we're at a stage where they're only losing a very small amount of their, their range as time goes on. Not noticeable, negligible amount of range lost. Um, but then you look at your mobile phone you, you look you know after three or four years and five or six updates from, from Apple and all of a sudden the phone is just dirt slow like <laughs> uh, it's very weird because I actually have I have an Apple iPhone 6 here I have an Apple iPhone 10 here and the difference between the two of them is huge huge in responsiveness everything this seemed fast when I bought it first and I bought that new uh, and that seemed fast when I bought it first but now that seemed the 10 seems like blitzing fast and the 6 feels like something that Nokia invented so it, technology moves on incredibly quickly Dylan Heathcote says bought a red set lay on FR what's a decent price for pain protection on it can't find it anywhere decent around Dublin very few do pain protection believe it or not <laughs> very few even offer that I'm surprised dealerships don't offer that quite naturally these days it's been an offer in the, in the US for years and the UK uh, where you buy it at a dealership and get pain protection included so it was always there. I don't know anyone that does it even in Ireland for full pain protection. You'd have to contact the specialist on that one. I don't know what the price would be either. 3D Printing says, Hi Bob, how much for VW paying you to go down go down Tesla? It isn't working. You better ask for more. Now what the hell do you mean by that? If you're insinuating even for a second that I get paid by anybody, that makes you the biggest liar that's ever been on this channel. I don't get paid by anyone to do any of these reviews. In my decade, over a decade here on YouTube, I've never been paid to do any reviews of any car or to diss any other car that's out there. You might be a Tesla uh, lover, owner, whatever it is, you're entitled to your opinion. So am I entitled to my opinion. Tesla makes some really brilliant cars. They also make some very innocent mistakes that most car companies wouldn't make because most car companies are 60 or 70 years old and Tesla is barely, I don't know, barely 20 at this stage. So you can take that as you please. But either way, if you insinuate again that I'm that I'm taking money from here, I'll have to ban you from the channel because I will not accept that in one single iota that anyone here is sponsoring any of these videos. I have built this entire channel based on the fact that it is independent from all outside influence, including yours. Uh, your Chrysler Delta review. Your Chrysler Delta is still a nice car. I still like that. It's a good little car, particularly the 1.4 T-Spark one. Um, Nestor sent Any reason not to take a lease on 3D ID3 first edition registered last day of 2020? 
I can't see a reason why you would. I mean, you're not, it's a lease, so you're not going to devalue. The, dev, the value of the car is not going to change in that respect. So it's still going to be the same, really, isn't it? Um, I can't imagine. The first edition ones are the ones that are still the only ones you can get, I think. I think pre order the other ones, but I don't need the first edition is the ones not sold out yet. David O'Connor, hi, Bob. Did you ever come across, come close to crashing or someone crashing into while recording a car review? No, not while recording. Um, I have had people crash into me while not recording. <laughs> so about that, I had a Volvo that was hit by a truck up on a nice road. Uh, he just he changed lanes, so it wasn't a big, heavy incident of any kind. But he changed. He went from uh, lane two to lane one, and my car was in lane one, and he didn't see it. He just bumped into the side. It was entirely his fault. And I was rear-ended here. Oh man, years ago, rear-ended here on the on a roundabout in Port Leash. Um, a big uh, Ford Transit, which emptied all of the fluids of the car was on the road. Uh, not on my car, his car. I drove off, it was fine. <laughs> I was in a say, I think. Uh, it was a long time ago. They're the only ones that come close. I've never, while recording, no. I don't actually, while recording the reviews, I don't really be driving that fast, to be honest with you. It looks fast because the way I've positioned the camera inside. Uh, how do you rate the say to let up Bob seeing it was a sister car of Skoda Rapid? Agree, both cars basically a big polo, unfairly Chris, I'd be impressed. I liked. I liked what Say It was doing years ago, like Toledo and all those kind of cars, and the Rapid. I thought they were really good little novel things. Now, they got rid of most of that because they're rationalising their fleet, like every other car company's been doing as well. They're getting rid of bits off the fleet along the way. So, um, Rapid will probably go the way of whatever the first one was. Uh, and, you know, you'll see them all sort of disappearing as they bring in an individual car for each one. So, it depends what, what kind of one you're after. I liked the, what Say It used to do, the old ones, the Alhambra, the Toledo, the kind of big useful cars when you go to Spain you see them everywhere they're everywhere you know it's great um, and then Bob do you have any ideas or anyone here know where I can get a rear, a rear diffuser dual exit for an Audi A4 B 8.5 S line model I've searched everywhere can't seem to find one there you are somebody needs a bit of help I don't know where you get one of them to be honest with you James Dunn got this auto mod on YouTube as class it is yeah <laughs> <laughs> it is it is i don't get any hassle here on youtube i've never gotten any hassle here on youtube uh years ago it used to be the wild west like tiktok is but here no ain't happening the interview for the dealership uh ford and hyundai good stuff that's what you're going for your apprentice that's good go for it man go for it you'll get it all right there's like the volvo 480 turbo 1980s i like the old volvos great the, the 8 series the 4 series they were lovely cars lovely lovely cars uh they are nothing to do with those modern volvos have nothing at all to do with the old type volvos totally different yokes any issues the mg looking online there appears to be a lot of complaints with issue dealers can't fix that's probably dealer innocence here i would suggest that um frank keen is the dealer that's dealing with um uh, mg ireland here i would say there's going to be a quite a long bedding in period of whether the cars are good or bad or indifferent here uh, so you're going to find that now i've had no issues other than i'm waiting for an update to the car to fix some of the problems i have they're not they're they're fixable issues with an update all the stuff i have is a fixable issue i don't have any problems with the car though um there was one sticky door handle on it which comes and goes i don't know what that is nobody seems to be understanding what that is and i looked all over the car to even find out what it is it doesn't seem to be bothered by it uh, and it's like it's of course we're not using it every day now you know we're only going to and from the shops really here in Port Leash the kids aren't in school so there's lots of things that we're not doing at the moment the kids aren't getting in and out of it every day like um, Cross 13 long range EVs coaches are easier than passenger cars and lorries 600 kilowatt pack jeez that's some battery isn't it in a coach will easily do 800 kilometers kilometer fully laden it's funny isn't it to think that something that size can go that far on batteries just because it's able it's got more space for batteries <laughs> so you put more batteries in it at no real cost you know it's amazing what technology is moving on very quickly and how backwards we are here and how we're supposed to applaud bus Aaron for making a jump to hybrids like hybrids have been around for how long <laughs> these little hybrids are around forever they could have done this all along but they didn't so it just seems a real short side of things stupid thing to do Antonio says, Bob, is your what's your opinion on the brand new stuff? Oh, we did that one. Uh, vlogs, Panda. Hi, Bob. Love your TikTok. Thanks. Just seeing about the Sunday service can come on to watch on YouTube. You can, yeah. I will get around to all your questions. It's just I have to go through them one at a time as we go along. Uh, Automotive L3 says, to qualify as a mechanic in the UK, anyway, the awarding bodies still have the questions about the points and condensers. Wow. Have they? 
<laughs> it'll be 40 years before they change what we teach uh, you can you can do high voltage course yeah that's I would suggest if you're going to go as a mechanic right now you really need to be aware of what's happening in the electric field and you also really need to be aware of what's happening in hydrogen or any other fuel types out there I wouldn't sit back on my laurels and I don't know 10 years time in, in a hands all grease and dirt and stuff still rooting away at some gearbox or other I think that's going to be a relatively short term future they'll still be necessary but there'll be a lot less and less and less jobs out there over the years really be careful of that one um, Clover Video hi Bob got a Renault 1.5 DCI engine and it has trouble starting in cold weather go ahead is it do you think it could be dirty injectors or block DG block DG or valves where it starts that's nearly free like you could take it out and see if it starts you could remove an EGR valve and the car was to run fine um, but yeah you could have dirty injectors or something like that it seems unusual 1.5 DCI is usually a incredibly dependable engine in all situations but not starting to cold to try the gold plug or the glow plugs in it or is the diesel heating properly could be bad diesel as well do Ireland get protons not if I can help it no <laughs> no <laughs> protons no not really we did get a few but most of them are just imports from the UK uh, Blade Runner yeah Blade Runner's over which side am I pointing this way there <laughs> <laughs> Look at myself in reverse on the screen. Blade Runner is there, yeah. Uh, I actually have another Blade Runner post around here somewhere, which I haven't put up yet. The Mad Max is on this side. Uh, and that is up there in the corner. That is Ghost in the Shell, the original cartoon one up there in that corner. I do a lot of them. Matt Lyons, did you see that gearbox manufacturer ZF have stopped ICE research and development spending? Not surprised. Another indicator the car industry is changing and changing quickly. Very quickly, Matt. Like... If you watch the press releases, 99% of the press releases that come out now mention their electric one first. Even when it comes to someone like Peugeot or Peugeot, uh, when they send out a new car and they go, here's the market, it comes in, in electric, diesel and petrol. Or electric, petrol and diesel. You know, they'll they'll change the order things are appearing, in, which is kind of weird to see. Because once upon a time, they, had, they wouldn't even mention an EV. They'd mention something else. They'd mention a hybrid or they'd mention a PHEV or something. But now they're leading with the electric car coming out from this and this and this. And somewhere down along the list, you see it's also available in petrol and diesel. <laughs> so it's becoming further down the list. So I, I suspect... There will be a very rapid five to six year changeover to this idea that it will all go away and all become electric and all become um, uh, easy to use and easy to own. Maybe even not own. Maybe you won't even own them. You know, that's going to happen too. Um, Edward out here. Hi, Bob. What's the battery cost replacement on these electric cars? Not being highlighted. I know the battery cost is still not there. We still don't know how much battery. Well, we do know how much they are. They're, they're getting cheaper for sure. But no one's replaced them. I mean, nobody needs to replace them yet. Uh, if you talk to Cross 13, he's been running electric cars for years. Very high range, very long distance driven all along. I don't think he's replaced any batteries as of yet. So uh, it's still possible to do that. James Dunn, he may be on Anchor soon. Anchor's an easy platform. I've never seen this easy. Now, I started a new account. I didn't bring my Podbean account over with me. They do allow you to pull your stuff that you've already got onto Anchor, and it's free. It's not just free. It's the, the distribution rights on it are very high. Uh, as long as you allow them to put it on Spotify, they don't care. It's a Spotify-owned company, so you're immediately on Spotify. You do your own iTunes thing. They can do that too, but I have my own iTunes account, a podcaster account there, and... Um, and then they push it out to absolutely everybody for you. And it's absolutely brilliant. Really love that stuff. Um, Antonio says, How about what's your opinion on the new brand? Oh, we did that. Again, don't copy and paste your questions. It's really hard to answer all the copy and paste things. I will come down to all your questions eventually. I'm answering now from 2.41. So like a half an hour behind you. Be all right. We'll catch up on you. Still no score on the Ireland-French match, unfortunately. It does look like Ireland's rather dominating the ball action at the moment, but no score on this field, which seems weird. Um, what do you think it'll be under the 330E hybrid? The 330E, 530E, both brilliant cars. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant cars. Really, really good. That single button that allows you, probably not good for CO2 emissions, but that single button that allows you to put some battery power back in again. Uh, you can fill up the battery while you're driving along the motorway and then when you get to where you want to you turn it back off and you're running on electric when you get there so in around the town you can have full electric all the time out the motorway you can drive on petrol and electric or hybrids or whatever you want to do um, Patrick Walsh thoughts on a Chevy SSR in Ireland <laughs> in Ireland or are you in America or where are you uh, I'll show you what a Chevy SSR I know what you're talking about it is one of the most unusual cars I've seen in a long time just get that window up there cut there we go. 
that's a Chevy SSR, uh, particularly that one as was the one you probably would be more also remarkable to. It is a very weird car. It is probably one of the stranger ends of what America does for cars out there. But if you want to stand out in a crowd, in fairness, you're definitely going to stand out in one of them. If you can bring one of them into the country, you would be sorted on on a of vehicles but like it is a very where are you going to get parts and you know so much that goes with that sort of thing out there so that's where i'd be careful with that one uh vlog pandas in then just put now you're going to stick in a little bit of a timeout just to relax there vlog panda be okay you relax we'll, we'll get you back after the timeout okay um cross 13 is answering my course ryan shaw so hear me out in this one okay do you think these higher end brands should release cheaper cars? Like imagine a Jaguar electric hatchback with a reasonable price. Do you think that kind of thing would work? It would work, but does that does that sully their brand? So they they built their brands on being a little bit exclusive, a little bit different, and that's kind of where their brand has been sitting forever. So they want to be they want to have that little bit of exclusivity when it comes to their brand. The ones that got rid of that exclusivity over the years, like Mercedes they still kind of have it uh, Audi and BMW would be the ones where you'd see them as luxury brands you see them as slightly exclusive brands but yet you know everybody can pretty much afford something in their range Jaguar's not quite there on that end of the market they don't do smaller cars they do those sort of exclusive cars but when it comes to electric stuff a lot of the homogenization that's going on underneath so the battery technology is made by particular companies but there's only a handful of them the motors and the stuff that goes into the motors only a handful of manufacturers those batteries those engines or uh, motors as well so between all that you'll find that the stuff underneath the car is starting to become a little bit more homogenized so you start to see that jaguar could skin up a car that has a floor plan that is a tesla floor plan you know what i mean it might be the floor it might be that Tesla stuff underneath and a Jaguar body on the outside or it could be a Volkswagen underneath and the body of the Jaguar on the outside that could be a way of doing it that you could end up with the brand you're looking for but the battery the motors the chassis the suspension is all done by a different company that that way you could do something really unique and yet it would have the same technology underneath as some other brands that's totally possible for sure uh, like I was always surprised that, that Mercedes didn't make their EQC range with Tesla inside using Tesla batteries, Tesla software, Tesla technology underneath, which is superb stuff. Uh, but I was just surprised that Mercedes, because they had a great tie up when it started out first between Mercedes and, uh, and it's still there between Mercedes and, and Tesla. Um, Dermot O'Brien is here. Uh, what's a good farm 4x4 under 20k? I don't do prices, Dermot, so I don't know. Good farm 4x4 is probably you have to talk to people who use farm. What do you see on farms everywhere else, like Azuzu Troopers and Mitsubishi L200s and uh, Toyota Land Cruisers those kind of cars are the ones that people go for on farms the ones I see all the time but it depends obviously what I don't work on a farm so I have no idea what you'd want as a farm I mean towing cattle is like a cow could be 700 kgs on its own just one cow so that kind of thing would require big trailers it would also require something that's got a bit of bit of weight behind it by the way the score now is 3-0 to Ireland so we're we're winning which is good it's always weird to see a scrum and you're looking up at the scrum and there's nobody in the stands right <laughs> it's still weird to see that uh, Honest Truth says hi Bob any views on the Scott of Superb Estate Saloon looking for a Mark 2 maybe the latest Mark 3 versions do they do a hybrid electric version yet not yet Neil no hybrid they do a hybrid version which is a mild hybrid uh, in the current models no electric version and I don't think there's an electric version planned I have a funny feeling they'll bring out some sort of a PHEV one which is on the way uh, we've already had um, there is already a PHEV one a hybrid one but this is the current model the Mark 3 Mark 2 versions of it would have been just petrol and diesel straight up great cars absolutely great cars but future of them don't know it's hard to say where, Sc where uh, Scott is trying to go with these things uh, William Bellingham it's been a hard working week in the snow this week uh, yeah I know we've had we had snow it didn't stay nothing happened John Finnerty hi Bob love the channel thank you going from strength to strength hopefully we'll keep on that way too how is the second hand market doing these days flying along chatting into a lot of people nothing moving are you hearing anything more well I was looking today this morning good question because you fo followed in on something I was looking at myself today um, I noticed this morning that uh, Kiri's so Kiri's uh, car company um, they sell cars here. Brendan Kiry is the owner of the car company. Um, Kiry's.ie is doing, and I, I'm not, I'm not paid by this, by the way. I just noticed it this morning. I thought it was a really gen genuinely good idea. Hang on, we cut off that. So here's, they're doing online deliveries. Uh, Kiry's Motor Group, right? They also run this Kiry's Car Store, one for all, or for a friend, all this stuff. Look at this, this stuff you can buy, right? 
This is all online. But also this, we buy cars. They do this as well. So some dealerships are really putting a lot of work into their online approach thing. Now, one of the older ones we've been doing all along is Kylemore Cars, which would have been all along been a, a physical bricks and mortar place, but most of their sales would have come from online. So everyone comes to the website and clicks the card looking for it. So these kind of guys in the background, and remember that Kiri's would be a uh, Hyundai, BMW, Nissan, Mini. they do a lot of brands, right, besides that. But Kylemore would be a dedicated used car outlet. Now, remember that that kind of space is happening all the time. Any dealership that's not paying attention to what these guys are at or what this kind of thing is happening right now, if you're going to rely entirely on those kind of sales that happen to people walking through your door, you're going to be in trouble in a very short space of time because this is how people are buying cars. This is how people are buying everything. Everything. Like, the ability for me to be able to shout at, at Alexa in the corner there and order a new toothbrush or a pair of shoes uh, just using my voice and let the machine choose it, that's insane like that's insane think of how that would have been possible five years ago right now this is possible right now you can flick into Kyle Moore cars right here sort out your finance sort out the price of the car everything's sitting right there you got 21 photographs of the car sitting there as well like you'd be insane not to think about this coming at you and if you're in someone like Kiri's with Brendan Kiri's doing seems to be doing huge work on this on this ability to be able to buy in used cars sell used cars and I'm not sponsored by any of these guys uh, I just seen it this morning I thought it was really interesting to see how many dealerships are actually shifting all of their stuff online everything all their abilities there they will deliver to your house they will come to your house and pick up your used car and take it away pay you cash at the door the whole thing has been sorted out for you and all moving online so it's definitely worth looking at if you're even remotely interested in that kind of thing um second hand market is still very buoyant in this country people are still buying second hand cars new cars no not so much new cars are still a little bit dodgy at the moment um down 26 percent or something we see the end of this one will tell us a little bit better uh detail on what's going on with the car industry but right now it seems to be right down on new cars particularly uh hang on just shot forward there again we're at oh we've only half an hour left my god this day is flying what's going on uh anyway Oh, sorry, uh, Cross has answered a question there. Beatmeyer, I love the logo BF. Oh, yeah, I like it too. Yeah, um, there's a few people actually want the logo because their name, their initials are BF as well. So <laughs> some people wanted the logo to come out in their t shirts. So we'll be having this year, yeah. Ireland will over overwhelm France on the wings. <clears throat> the only way I can see France winning is if Ireland would be slow defence line. It's currently still 3 0. Although I'm watching a replay and I don't know if that's France scoring or Ireland scoring. No, it's Ireland scoring. That doesn't look like a try to me. We'll see anyway. See if it's under control or not. Um, Dermot OB, I had 1.6 TDI DSG, so get diesel because it suits motorway driving. It does, in fairness to you. Um, electric cars suit motorway driving as well, but 1.6 TDI, 2 litre TDIs are really, really good on the motorway. In fairness to them, they are pretty good. Uh, that is getting very dark, isn't it? Me, I, because it's getting dark outside. We're starting to get dark, so it's dark in here too now. Weird, man. Weird. Uh, how these things do that? Scene, video capture properties. Hold on. Call commercial sales for a second. Let's see if we can approve that a little bit. Boom, 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 boom. Aha! Hey, hey, now there you go. How's that? That better, brighter, and better. I've made myself brighter. Hopefully that doesn't just blow out and all of a sudden. Anyway, Joe Cooney. Ireland, oh yeah, I did it. Dermot will be uh, 1.6 TDI on the motorways. Yeah, 1.9, 1.2 litre TDIs do better on the motorway, for sure. Uh, they're very efficient. It just it just cruise on. I've gotten, the best I ever got from range-wise was an Audi A6, a DSG one. I did 1,279 kilometres in a 2 litre TDI on one tank of fuel. Uh, Honest Truth says hey great new logo Bob that looks really good nice one Neil thanks Neil uh, Andy McAfee is still talking about coaches because he's a bus driver <laughs> Andy McAfee is a professional bus driver Honest Truth best one I've gotten approved was 2019 or 2020 Scottish Power 2 litre TDI sell he's answering some questions there Dermot Crooks where can I sell my Audi A7 to a dealer collecting my Tesla in two weeks I don't really want to sell it from the door I don't know that's what I was literally looking at there a minute ago as we buy cars from Kiri's Motors they buy them directly in uh, I know Tesla do we've had this conversation before Tesla do sell your used cars we give it to them they do um, sell them on to other people because Cross pointed that out to me as well uh, but realistically you got to sell it privately or you got to sell it to a dealer direct uh, it's quite difficult do I pay VRT on electric car import from the UK yes VRT is vehicle registration tax it's based upon your license plate not your car 
So yes, you have to change the license plate over. Unless the car was owned for six months in the UK, then you don't pay VRT. I mean, you're the owner of the car for six months and you import it in Ireland. Then VRT disappears. Magic, isn't it? Uh, hi, Bob. Consider buying a Lexus IS300H with around 60,000 miles. Should I be concerned about the batteries? No, I wouldn't be with Lexus. Uh, as Lexus quote, and I'll famously quote to me, uh, we're in the business of selling cars, not batteries. They don't, they're not in the business of trying to replace your battery, no matter what the mileage is. Uh, the battery will still be good. It'll still be good at plenty of time, so you'll have no problem with that at all. Lexus have been stalwarts of reliability for a very long time. Uh, Dermot Cavanagh, the match is just about to kick off. Oh, yeah, we're, we're still there. I'm watching here, yeah. We're still going. 3 0. France has got a penalty in. Uh, so we're at the French quarter, but we're coming back up the field again now. We've been kicked down the field, we're coming back up the field again. Bit of a a hoof up in the air there <laughs> scampering we're there uh, Honest Truth says Dermot the Lauren the one is the extra essay good enough spec uh, sorry we're answering questions of each other now um, Andy McAfee says watched the first Iron Man movie last night in 4K and during a big fight scene at the end I noticed something from this now 13 year old movie in a background screenshot sent on Facebook Messenger I'll have a look at that in a while uh, and why are you not going to watch the room? I'm watching the room. It's here beside me. I'm a half an hour behind you in question, by the way. I'll be there in a minute. Uh, Clover Video. Hi, Bob. Looking at good used car and need to find a more about models of reliability. It's a great website. You can recommend to give some more info. What car? Honest John. The only one that does reliability stuff that I've seen doing was What Car. Now, there is other places you can look at recalls, which is publicly available. Um, but reliability for brands is not something that's really measured that well. JD Power used to do it for years, but I haven't seen anything good come out of that for a long time. Um they were the only ones measuring it. I don't know where they went but after that. Generally speaking, most brands are pretty even across the board on reliability-wise, but Japanese ones tend to do better over longer time, mostly because they don't make the cars quite so complicated as European car manufacturers make them. Uh, kind of hard to find the information for you, though, to be honest with you, who's reliable, who isn't. JD Power would be the only one I know that actually did it, and what car do their own, but you have to pay a subscription to get that one, I think. And Noel Sullivan, hi Bob, were you impressed recently, you were impressed recently on the ID4, so starting at 36k for 52 kilowatt compared to the MG ZS top spec at 33k, which one would you go for? Um, I would go, right now, I, I because I haven't driven the ID4 in Ireland, I've only driven the German one in Ireland. I'd like to see the Irish spec for that money. That's my my dubious nature in my head is going for 36 grand. It's probably going to be a little bit less uh, uh, comfortable or the seats will be different or something's going to be different in that car. But realistically, I think you'd have to take your hat off the MG to come in a little bit cheaper than that. But I think I would still plump for the Volkswagen currently because of the packages they're offering. But MG seems to be doing really good things. Uh, I think France just scored a try there. They did, yeah, it's gone 5 3. Oh, lads, here we go again. Ireland gets a great start and then throws it away halfway through. <laughs> anyway, um, I would probably go to Volkswagen route just because Volkswagen are doing really good things in packages they're offering. It's not quite sorted out yet, but they're looking to put in the home charger for you. They're looking to do, uh, you know, even take over your electricity bill. They've done deals with Ionity and all that. You know, they're doing a catch-up job right now and they seem to be doing really hard work on it. So I'd probably go that route. But now for my use at home here, for the car that we're replacing, which is um, the Seat Leon doing 6,000 to 10,000 kilometers a year, I wouldn't bother. I, like 10,000 kilometers a year is nothing. Buy the cheapest electric car you can to replace that kind of car, you know. That's the one I look at uh, Renault Zoe entry level MG stuff you know that kind of thing um, Dermot O'Brien uh, no one ever get the style in LK no I was answering George's question there I'll land fact. Mark Mullion EVs being heavier could cause more damage to the roads mm, they're not considerably they're a little bit heavier than normal cars uh, if you go down to the smaller end of the car it seems like a bigger bigger jump like the E208 being one and a half tons and the petrol version of an E208 or petrol version 208 uh, being like 800-900 kgs so there's like a half a ton of batteries in there in the middle of it that's what's causing that now whether that causes more damage to the roads then wouldn't trucks cause twice as much shouldn't we be charging them a huge amount of money for, for road damages it's hard to say I don't know if EVs are doing more or less damage to what's going on in the environment whether the roads really matter that much we have to repair them anyway uh, Adrian MC hi Bob great to see you living up the electric car for a year show us what others show others what it's like the good and the ugly that's exactly what I'm after I'm not going to sugarcoat the problems I come across um, 
I really want to understand because I, I think a lot of electric car owners now did a huge amount of research to find out what they wanted to do for electric cars and how to do this, how to do that, did all that. I think the vast majority of people who are buying into electric cars right now are not doing that research. I've had emails from people asking to explain how to get a charge point and you go, what car are you thinking of? And they tell you they've already bought an EV Solar, or they've already bought something. They've already got an electric car and they haven't sorted out the charge point yet. So I think there's an element of people just going and buying a used car and going, right, electric car, this is the way it's going. I can plug it into a three pin socket at home. And then they realize it's three days to charge their car at home from a three pin socket that just isn't designed for doing this, you know. So there is an education element to it, but there is also an innocence level that people haven't really thought about what's going to happen next and what's going what's going to be the best way out of this. Um WW18, hi Bob. And isn't this on Leaf 62 kilowatt the best option in that price range? Leaf arguably has done a little bit more harm to electric cars than any other car because they pulled the trigger a little bit too quick on electric cars. The infrastructure wasn't there at all when Leaf came out in Ireland first. Uh, and the 62 kilowatt one is the one that has the problem with no liquid cooling, no cooling option, no active cooling, it's called. Uh, so no fans around the battery to keep it cool when it's been run. So if you drive up a motorway in a 60 kilowatt, 62 kilowatt leaf and you go to fast charge, it may not fast charge at the full p- speed because the battery's overheating. And that, that caused, and then there's a life issue on this on leaf as well. Uh, leaf is, is certainly the most common electric car you see in the road because it's been around the longest and it's pretty good. And in that price range, yeah, probably, it's probably in there, right in there. But it, it definitely hasn't got the range of a 62 kilowatt car that's the problem with that there's other cars with smaller kilowatt batteries that can go further for some strange reason probably to do with the active cooling um look look again at the range look what's coming as well for that kind of money look what's going to compete with that car in that range it's not always about range it's not always about very long range in the car as to what you need look at your mileage per year like our mileage was six to ten thousand kilometers so it was easy for me to go to an mg with 250 kilometer range it's fine it'll do us like we charge that three times since we got it in a month and a half so that's it we've only charged and we've only charged at home as well it's cost us next to nothing to run that car uh have you an ipad and rubbing the telly man united westbourne <laughs> we got we got multiple sports things happening all at once there we it's good to see something back that isn't about covid right sports of any kind whatever and i don't even like football but even i'd watch a football match now just to have something that isn't someone going today covid infection rates are up really high now you know that stuff Combi or lift back for combi. Combi for me as well. Yeah, I'll be combi all day long. Shane Donnellan, uh, hi Bob. What are your impressions of the Audi e-tron GT? Looks for, looks superb. Probably the first electric car I've seen that I got genuinely excited by the look of it. <laughs> all of them have been a bit spaceship looking or a bit odd looking, but that one it just bang straight in there went that car is outstanding looking i just hope audi make the thing just make it be don't don't stop playing with it and fiddling with it and messing around with it make it and blow our socks off it'd be great to have something to look at that isn't the porsche taycan which is also a pretty car only in weird colors but it's also a pretty car uh, i'd like to see um uh audi make it which it is kind of based on the taycan it does look a lot like taycan doesn't it uh, Dermot O'Brien yeah it's not worth it you know SEL style is more reliable it has the crap to go wrong don't know what that is the newer car engines lower the tax not always most of the newer car engines are lower CO2 yeah so the tax does go down because CO2 goes down with them on most of the cars it's tax band A you kind of want to be in there is an argument for the government to move around the tax bands at the moment as the vast majority of cars are in the first couple of bands of tax band A that's pretty much where they all are uh, and I, I do I would suggest that it'd be a good idea to have an EV only tax band instead of a tax band A where they sit right now there might be a tax band I don't know A plus or something where you'd have uh, an EV band where it'd all be 100 euro a year you still need to charge for it I don't think you should get it for free but I think you should still have an intense an, an incentive for people to go well if I buy that I'm going to save another 20 quid a year on tax you know uh, Bob74 says looking for a first car but don't want something common any suggestions that's the problem there's not much for, there's not much out there that is uncommon in the first cars if you're looking for your first car you're probably getting your first insurance insurance is going to be your killer you need to stay below 1.4 litre petrol uh, preferably petrol just stay into a small engine car uh, smaller diesel cars don't do so well like 1.6 diesels or any, they, they still get nailed on insurance you could look at Kia Picanto look at Hyundai i10 
uh, VW Ups, go to City Go, say it me. If you go into VW Golf, you're going to pay over the price uh, insurance. They get nailed. Polos get nailed as well on insurance just because they're there. Uh, so look at the smaller engines. Look at how much insurance you're going to pay because the insurance, you don't want to be working to pay insurance. You don't want to be driving a car and not be able to afford petrol because the insurance is so high. So just bear that in mind. That that's that's the main consideration is insurance want. Uh, it is on Virgin 1, Virgin Media Player, yep. Yeah. First hour done, get the painter to brew the tea. <laughs> get the painter to brew the tea. We're coffeeed out today. I'm on the water today. I'm trying to rehydrate because I need to go for a run. And the rain has stopped. Oh yeah, she forgot. She forgot. Look, she's out there still painting the bleeding hall. That's why she forgot to make the tea and the coffee and all that. Right, we're grand. It's 20 then now. We're lovely. Uh, I got p- good pain protection from Hyundai. There you go. See, Hyundai, we won. I never, just never heard of anyone... Um, doing paint protection in Ireland I don't know why seems weird isn't it Tesla is on 17 years old yeah it'll be up there 17 is it older than that even the two lads who invented Tesla I can't remember what year it was I made a bleeding documentary I didn't think I'd know wouldn't you uh, it's older than, than I think it was up around 20 years old in total but uh, he's um, he's a good uh, the man suggests Bob's a sponsor channel fails to see the, his daily Nokia 5110 in the background <laughs> over here in the corner yeah that's my daily phone I still run a Nokia I don't get picture messages or do anything like that um, uh, cross 13 I'm going ahead with my moving a lot of business related stuff to electric largely for any of the financial cases entirely there on the farm side I have chainsaws etc battery electric tractors Next, all, I've seen all those I was working with a, with, a, with a gardening group over the last couple of years I'll be working with them again next week on some video stuff and I, I get to see some of the stuff that's ahead like it's not my territory that kind of gardening thing is not my territory but literally I was looking at pre-planned stuff that Husqvarna is bringing out and complete ranges of stuff that are all done on battery packs and it's fascinating it's so simple why no one thought of this before it's amazing so Husqvarna was making this battery pack that goes on like a backpack on your back right and a universal connector so you could connect any of the tools that they've got to the universal connector would all run from the one battery pack instead of having a battery on each device you're carrying the battery so you have leaf blowers chainsaws you've got the lo- everything everything you would use in your garden completely battery powered but the batteries are not on the product they're on a backpack uh, and they made instead of having it plugged into your wired out yoke you can be off down the back end of a field somewhere and you have a uh, charger for your car they just really thought about the connections for electric cars and electric devices and electric power units in connection to everything they use on the farm or around your garden whatever it is and i saw that two years ago now i reckon uh, that that was coming out and now i'm starting to see it trickle down as being something you can buy in your local garden shop so it's amazing how fast these things come at you and how quickly everything everything can be transferred over to electric in one way or the other so however you want to try it you will eventually get there uh, so that's really good to know actually uh, that you're going that direction as well cross 13 for sure uh, missed where I was now PNW 330E is a good car yeah no problem 330E for sure yeah 37 to France still uh, and we're just making mistakes as far as I can see it's kind of the usual thing nearly the usual thing that happens to Ireland that I've seen over the years we did really well a couple of years ago but this, this year we seem to be making that same thing we get a good head start we come out strong beginning of the match and then it seems to go mm, over time it's really weird like um john check says it's minus 29 celsius here in uh us i don't know where that is uh the tesla model y heat pump has gone hard time delivering heat and this temperature is cold as hell today i get charged 75 dollar raw tax per year whoa is that all 75 dollars that's all right that's only like 50 odd euro um a minus 29 bloody hell that is th- that's scary cold, isn't it? Can you imagine walking out in a minus 29 temperature? Like? And that's Celsius. That's not Fahrenheit. Minus 23 in Scotland. Minus 23 in Scotland. You don't know my voice says as well. It's crazy, isn't it? Uh, power garden tools. Uh, they can be banned fossil fuels versus tomorrow. The alternatives are better. They are, actually. Uh, the one we had, uh, the company I was working with, had a leaf blower uh, that was full battery. Full battery electric thing. And it runs at 100% of its power all the time. So you can turn it up and down but I just found it really cool because the, it was possible to have two batteries you have one on charge and one running all the time like they ran all day they were able to run all day on the power reserves that were there so I thought it was great really good idea and they're quieter because you're not starting anything up you're not spilling any petrol 
because uh, that's where most of them would have been petrol powered or two stroke power there's no real noise out them other than the, the operation of the actual leaf blowing thing just fascinating stuff to see what's coming at us and what we all talk about cars but what's actually happening outside the car realm of things as well uh, which is much more interesting Jez Ireland's getting pulled apart here hold on 310 we're at 310 ah lads that's crazy anyway right <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh, Colin Whelan says we've now moved our whole fleet bar one diesel to electric we have a Nissan Leaf a Hyundai Kona a Kia Nero Tesla Model 3 and a Volkswagen ID4 coming in May that's amazing Colin it's amazing to see any company uh, move like that and it's also what's even more amazing is that not every company is looking at that not every company who has press or has uh, uh, cars out there um, and stuff that they're selling all the time and they're, they're using their car products that they're not thinking like that all the time that we really should be looking at all the uh, incentives for companies to move to it uh, I'd be interested to find out what's going to happen with uh, like I know EV Box have brought out a system where if you have EV Box in work and I have it at home that I can charge my home units even though I'm, f- I'm charging in work which is a question I had last year about what businesses are going to do when everybody's electric and they're driving to work and they all want to charge in the car park who's paying the bill for all the electricity the businesses but now we seem to be getting to the point where you can bring a card and your card is attached to your home unit so you're you're clicking in and clicking out on somebody else's thing uh, and so you can charge it up uh, charge your house even though you're charging at work which i find really good Adrian says, how did you become a modern journalist? Did you request the test drives from companies or the car or the test drive door cars? It goes back a long way. Uh, I started out on my own, making my own website first, and then I made the YouTube channel afterwards. Um, but realistically, when it came to actually the first press cars, when it comes to like people, press companies coming at me, they came at me because uh, I was making videos already. Uh, and once they came about, once one seen a video coming up, once you got one press car, it kind of opens the doors to other press cars out there as well over time. So you start to get the phone numbers, start to find out who they are and where it is. Once you're moving in the circles, once you're moving around within the circle of the press cars things, then you become, because there's very few of us. In actual fact, really, in the country, there's probably only five people who do it for a living. Um, maybe six that I can think of there's probably only about 45 or 50 people total who even get a go in a press car and some of the press cars would only go out to four or five people and that's it so there's there's different layers or levels or whatever you want to call them amongst those the ones that are actually i suppose professionally doing it and and running as a professional organization then there's ones that are well doing it for the free cars and i suppose you're going to always get that in any business you're ones who kind of sidle through the whole thing so other ones want to do it professionally and that's it's me is doing it professionally and it's you that keeps the thing on the road here so it's the it's the audiences all the car companies want really most of the car companies don't really care what you say about cars unless you're hyundai but most of the car companies don't really care what you're saying about cars as long as you're talking about their cars that's pretty much it you don't have to be nice you don't have to be if you're nice about everything as a journalist people stop watching that's what happens if you're not if you're not at least trying to criticize cars they just stop watching and i noticed that on the id4 in that i did a video where i like the car and it comes across that i like the car and the amount of people who say you're being paid by volkswagen and you're going and it happened today again being paid by volkswagen there's no payment comes in from any car companies so you don't get paid to do this uh, Andy McPhee says 1.5 DCI slow starting in colder weather first have the battery tested that could be a good idea as well I'll test the battery yeah what happened to Chevrolet again ran out of money essentially Chevrolet were bought out by someone else uh, and then they sold shares for something else and it just got messy as to who Chevrolet were in the end um, because a lot of the Chevrolets that come out here were Lancias and Lancia is Fiat and Fiat has no money anyway so so many different bits attached to car companies very few independent car companies left uh, BMW and Toyota I think are the only ones that are kind of left hanging out there aren't they best heaters in the car Tesla Tesla 100% I don't know what it is I don't know what they do but the Tesla Model 3 heater cooler thing you set a temperature and then you forget it you just don't worry about it after that it just keeps you at that exact temperature forever uh, they have it nailed and uh, I love the vents and things in the Model 3 they're really good it's, the animations on the screen is really good Tesla would be the first the ones that annoy me the most are actually Audi uh, because you have this hot cold feeling it cools the whole cabin then you start to feel cold then it turns the heat back on and you can feel heat so it never really settles into it I don't know what Tesla did to make the difference but that was the one I, I liked the most in the Tesla Model 3 and Model X and Model S all three 
Uh, Aid says, hi, Bob. Check out Muxan in Holland for the idea on EV battery cost. You want to know? I'm going to do that right now. Hold on. See what it is. See what that is. Muxan. Upgrade your Nissan Leaf. Uh, ooh. Okay. Look at this. This is interesting. I wasn't expecting this. This is Muxan. Um... Get further and get faster in this and leaf electric vehicle and give you all the models very significant upgrades of battery capacity, charging speed, and charging methods. So the products they have is an extender battery, extra batteries installed in the trunk of your car, main battery upgrade, replace an old battery with a newer original model, and charging options, then change your obviously change your charger there. Uh, that's what I'm interested in. Here's your prices. Look at that. Nissan Leaf battery swap upgrades. If you want to go 62 kilowatt, it's 13,490. That's terrifying. It's <laughs> terrifying amount of money. <laughs> That's a lot. Uh, or at least it feels like a lot. Uh, but even as its lowest, like a 6,990. Wow. That is a lot of money for a Nissan Leaf. Would the car even be worth that? Like <laughs> a 62 kilowatt. 13 and a half grand, essentially. I did not know that I was there. Thank you very much, Aid, for pointing that out. I'm going to route through that whole website now to see what's going on. Um, I'm very, I'm really curious about, about the ability for home users or mechanical users to be able to swap out the old engines in cars, saving the car, but removing the engines for electric. I really have a curiosity behind that, in that if we could start doing that, can you imagine the less cars being manufactured, more ability to keep cars on the road longer and keep, you know, it's just, there's a lot going on there. That you could change, like I have a 15, 16 year old set lay on outside that I could easily whip out the battery or whip out the car uh, motor and put it in electric motor and put in a battery, but not at 13,000 euros. <laughs> That's not going to happen because the car is not worth that. But if it was done at a reasonable rate, it would be possible, you know. Um, thoughts Owen Wolf thoughts on importing the cars in the UK you can if you want to like if you can get a better deal for sure but just remember if it's first registered in the UK there's VAT and 10% surcharge on it uh, which is an import duty essentially because of Brexit Brexit has nailed that door shut uh, it makes them very expensive here and chances are you will pay less now at a standard dealership for the same car Darren Cavan, what's your thoughts on Audi RS4? Is it a good machine? I was thinking of purchasing one. Brilliant machine. All RS's cars are absolutely phenomenal to drive. Noise, pantomime, the whole thing happens in RS's all the time. And you can live with them every day. The suspension is good enough to do that. But they are expensive to run. If you're thinking about expensive them, start looking how much it is to service one. And RS's do need a proper service. Not necessarily from main dinner, but they need a proper service for sure. Uh, Mamin says Consumer Reports magazine and websites here in the States do reliability rates with new and used car I wish we had them I know the ones you're talking about in the UK there's loads of them up there you can actually see it on sales websites and all kinds of stuff over there very clear in the US shame we don't have it here Ian Chambers says excited to see the new Renault 5 come to market I love that car I love that car uh, will it move the EV game on significantly would be a Zoe being nicer more attractive looking package I think Renault 5 the Renault 5 that they're talking about I think is going to be a really good car but I do also believe that uh, it'll be a bespoke seller uh, when they get it the EV one I'll just flick over to a shot of it there you can see the original one here that miserable looking yoke over the one side <laughs> It does look miserable these days. <laughs> Just the older one. Here's the new one, though. That's much more like it. Uh, so I don't think that lighting on the front is actually legal. But uh, we'll see as it comes out. That's what it looks like front and rear. Very, very handsome car. That's something to get excited about properly. I just don't... I think it'll be a more unique seller. I don't think it's going to be sell, sold out the whole time. But it, it's nice to see all proper car companies... Uh, going after that market and trying to make something that we can all get a little bit excited about because we need that in EVs. doesn't always have to be about range and torque and power. It can actually be something interesting to look at too. Uh, Jesper says, will the new steering wheel and the new Tesla Model S is not legal? Uh, I'll make it to Europe. No. The a steering wheel has to be round to get through safety kits and all, all kinds of stuff, reasons why. Plus, if you go off this position at all to turn a corner or cross your hands, it disappears. <laughs> it, just, it doesn't work at all. Watch old episodes of Michael Knight's uh, uh, kit car thing. He had a steering wheel, just the two things on either side. But I don't, the standards here wouldn't allow it to happen anyway. That's just a concept interior. Uh, some of the interior will work though. 
Frank Cullen, the ID3 real option normally the base spec is poor and the additions drive the price right up. Skoda ENIAC looks the same price, looks okay until you look at the options. Yep, they're all like that. Entry level of everything is all about the range, about getting in there. Uh, I even got that same talk about the ID4 as well, that they're going to have a reasonably priced ID4, but it will be just like a steering wheel with seats. You know, they will have to get rid of everything out of it. It's VRT, it's VRT and taxes here in general. That's absolutely killing us. Uh, Minister B or Mr B, uh, no pain protection in Ireland. Uh, Irish people are not are not so stupid. <laughs> it depends. John Check is minus twenty nine here too. He's located in Minnesota. Nine to minus twenty nine lads. Jesus. If you get the opposite of that here, be happy. Plus twenty nine be good. Uh, Paul O'Connor, a friend of mine, picked up a new K- take on on Friday. He drive it a hundred yards, loaded into a lorry, and sent it to be converted with a PPF. Great. Okay. Okay, you can get it done, alright. Uh, my power company gave me unlimited charging from 9pm to 9am 43 quid a month and gave me 700 quid charge for charger to use now that's a nice look at that if you charge look at that would be a good idea here and there wouldn't it if you charge in off times that you get it either free or unlimited charge or something there's got to be something to, something we can do here for that Toyota Prius or a hazard on the road and the driveway too slow that's because people are afraid to press the accelerator pedal at all to make the engine come on uh, why are job cars so reliable if they are that reliable and why oh, don't it make the lights of BMW copy their ways because Japanese cars are made very uncomplicated way they just make cars they have a very unique way of making cars not to everybody's taste some people like the complexities of a BMW and don't want to open a bonnet no interest in doing it the car light comes on car goes back to the dealership they don't want to know anymore that's more what um, BMW is about now we're on that break again I want to see what the score was god damn it anyway come on test, uh, uh, RT, uh, Virgin Media Player get sorted um the Japanese then make cars that just have less in them as well. They feel lighter on the road. They feel different on the road from anything that is European. Uh, Europeans just have their own way of making them. And BMW are actually pretty reliable at first. But when they go wrong, they cost a bloody fortune. Um, a driver test a Model Y performance. Do you drive Model Y, John? That's a, that's a question now. Because I all I see online, this is the problem when we only see bits and pieces online, is people being negative about Model Y. I saw a, t- a TikTok the other night where a guy was pointing out all of the gaps and things in these pa- door panels. Like, I've never seen that in a Tesla. I've had a Tesla 3 here with a couple of problems with it, already, but nothing along these kind of lines and stuff, you know? And, it, like, anyone who's bought a Model 3 in this country seems to be okay with it, happy with it. So, um, if you are a Model Y, have you had any problems? Sean Hopkins, our Skoda Enya- Enyaq, and he goes Enyaq, um... Uh, they'll be on the way here they seem pretty good like an id4 or good uh and i'd say uh, every few very few charging points there's loads of charging points just not all in the right place and there's just not enough of them in the one places that are there so you'd get to a charge but like charge point in nace is in tesco's car park it's a fast charger there's no slow chargers uh and there's the only charge point in newbridge so far is the one that's at the train station which isn't in newbridge it's two kilometers from Newbridge is the train station. <laughs> so so the problem is that some places have no charge points. Some places that have a charge point don't have enough of them. Uh, what I would like to see is just a lot more charge points in general. Charge points should be everywhere, like everywhere. We should pull into all kinds of parking spaces to see them there. Um, Port Leash is going to have the most charge points per capita fairly shortly as... Little are expanding, putting in a few more charge points, and the local county council and the ESB, which is the training offices here in, in Port Leash, are putting in more of them as well. So we actually have two fast chargers in the town, three fast chargers in the town. So you need to get it. Uh, watch Rich Rebuilds channel. He does that. Does what? Fix oh fixes up cars, puts in the electric. Yeah, I'd love. To. See a lot of UK or a lot of Irish ones wouldn't have a clue how to do it so i'd love to do it here i'd literally love to do that here it'd be so easy to do it i'd love it um uh golf gti close port any thoughts if you can get one there's not many of them around they're a great car though really good car good fun to drive for sure toyota uses bmw engines in a few cars bmw use toyota engines as well and gearboxes and lots of lots of crossovers there in bmw and toyota they've been doing lots of stuff for years uh in their cars so you get and like you're finding renault in mercedes like the current Mercedes lineup has a 1.6 DCI engine from Renault in it. That happens too. Uh, hit stars is minus 29 degrees Celsius to minus 20 Fahrenheit. All right, okay. Um, Sarif Hussain, which SUV is better under 30? 
Uh, perfect engine and powerful. I don't know what that is. Is that your local currency? I don't know what kind of currency that is. I don't really do prices because the prices are all over the place. Michael Gall says, Bob, you are, you are saying that UK incentives to buy cars are gone. Is it possible to bring cars or, or especially motorbikes in from other countries to avoid all of that? Only if you bring them within the EU, uh, Michael. It's the only way to avoid that thing. So if you're... Like I know American cars are being imported into Holland and then brought over here because Holland only has 10% import duty. So we have a 30% import duty from America. Uh, but if you can buy it from another EU country, then yes, you can avoid the import duties and VRTs and all that sort of stuff that goes with it because you pay the tax in one EU country, you pay the taxes in all your EU countries. So you can't be charged twice tax in the EU. I think, I hope. <laughs> That's what it should be. Some heap of new take-ons delivered to Fingers Porsche Centre this week. Yeah, there's loads out, isn't there? In fairness, they are around. They are being sold. People are buying them. Um, which is kind of against the green as well because that means that not, it's going to be not very exclusive you know if you see a Taycan every day why would you buy a Taycan over I don't know anything else like a Tesla Model S or something you know what I mean um, I know a left hand drive is an issue but not for motorbikes that's true yeah go to f- buy a motorbike in France and import it over here surely that'd be cheaper because just things are really expensive here um, you're going to get an e- Soul EV do you rate them a Soul EV is still one of my favourite cars that at is electric at the moment so a kia soul and kia e nero the two of those cars right up there so soul would be a great car it's a deadly car the range is unbeatable for the price of the thing like i drove one of them to galway one night and drove back on the same charge from port leash no bother no bother plugged in when i got here and still had 20 percent charge on it just a great thing seriously about bmw great until all the plastic crap under the bonnet starts to crack and break yeah i know but that's it's kind of I know a lot of cars do that it's not just BMW anyway if he rich rebuilds nuts entertaining channel lots of Tesla builds and swaps now putting a V8 into a Model S just because he fancies one <laughs> flawless detailing and draw how to do a PPF there you go there's one recommendation PPF uh, Frank Gooding just heard a rich rebuilds comment does the same some class stuff rebuilds an RS7 lovely machine does some interesting stuff with Tesla too must, must subscribe to the channel that's good rich rebuilds uh, if we've made it it's after 4pm you're very good to join us again for this Sunday service thank you very much to everyone who's come along today uh, it's been a good day again for sure there's been plenty of streams on today well over 3,000 people here today in and out throughout the, the whole thing uh, the scores are still the same France looks like they're about to cross the line again but it's 310 to France currently now it's kicked out uh, and they I think will probably win this unless Ireland make a good return in the next while but it doesn't matter it's okay we had a good time today it's brilliant to have you along uh, come back again next week on Sunday you can track me down everywhere don't forget the new podcast is out a new episode that will be out next Friday if you think you'd make a good guest on that podcast I'm looking for your name if you want to be on you think you can talk about something that gives you something interesting to get on with brilliant I'm happy with that I'm not looking for real famous people to be on it there is some famous people booked in already but I want to make it a normal podcast for normal people to understand uh, and uh, to cling on to. So if you're interested in talking about stuff, come on, we'll talk about stuff. We'll see if we can get uh, some sort of conversation going about electric cars or about anything. It doesn't even about cars. I did John, uh, John was on yesterday and he was talking about being a senator, being an author, uh, the environment, camper vans, all kinds of stuff. So we can talk about anything you want. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me again today. Uh, and until the next time, I will see you on the far side.